Sakuli Breketenina. As a watchman, I see, oh God, I see far and I see a near, and I know my King and my God that you said every time I ask, ah, that when I call upon your name, you will answer. As I humble myself, oh God, that you will show me your face. Lord, I have seen your hand, but I need to see your face in this season, in this new year. Let your face shine upon us, oh God, as your people. Let no wastage come to us, oh God. Let every wasted, every wasted land begin to become a fruitful field. Let the fruitful field become a forest. Let throne room become a forest, oh God, of priests. Because this place is a place where priests are raised. A nation of priests. Lord, let not my life alone be the priesthood. Let my children, my grandchildren, the generations after me, Stand up as priest before you, O oh God, to offer sacrifices. Makani Maruska Kataya, that is holy and acceptable. Makuria Lavaro Seketia, for this is holy ground. My life is holy ground. Let me birth children after my kind that live in holiness and, and honor you, O oh God, and fear you, O oh God, and walk circumspectly before you, redeeming the time so that the generations will not be wasted. Makano Prokotea. I can't hear you praying. This is a praying house. This is a praying house. Open your mouth and say something to the Lord. Attend to me by your mercies, oh God. Attend to me by your mercies, oh God. Because this is a new year. Makuchi katele korusha katataka. Breketele keteya. I present my life. I present my family. I present my land. I present my business, my job, my ministry. I present my church. Sakin la korose ketila katataka. Prokotonoma, Masakati le Prokotisi Keleketitata, Sakitele Korushi Katalade, Meseketete. Lord, I am hungry. I am thirsty in this new year. I don't want to go hungry. I don't want to there be any scarcity of your word for my life. I don't want to be there be any scarcity of direction for me. Makorusha Kataya for my people, for my nation. Mahunda Karisha Kata. You said I am a city that is upon the hill, cannot be hid. Let my life become a light and a beacon of hope for many. Let my children become the signpost of direction for men to find you, O God. Let my ministry, O God, be that sign that many will look and see and say, that is the way to go. My God, strengthen my weak hands and strengthen my feeble knees, O God. As I make a straight path for myself, my God, Sandava Kori Barakada. Grant me understanding. Grant me wisdom. For everyone who comes into the house of the prophet. Gets direction. Lord let me have direction. Let my nation have direction. Let my clan have direction. The Bible says that he led them. Bah, he led them through a straight path uh, to reach a city where they could live. Uh, ah, lead me through a straight path uh, to the city of God. Uh, the city of Many errors out there. The frequency of error is so high. Keep my ear. Keep my ear from hearing errors. Let my ear only hear your word. Telling me which way to go. Lead me in a straight path, oh God. Lead this ministry in a straight path. Lead us as your church in a straight path. See Capro Labakendi Bakani and Oba, Se Cotura Shaka Calibre Getenia, Libro Cotushi Ketele Brocolete Gia, Mansa Cataya. Ah, lead me so that I can give thanks. Let my testimony, O God, be the prophecy that is needed in this time. In Amaso Corushata Calibre Geta. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Our dear watchmen in this house, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. 
Uh, no, no, I don't think the heavens heard your voice. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Tonight is the day that you have made. We join the clouds and the witnesses in heaven and on earth. We join the myriads, the creatures you have made in the sea and underneath the earth. And we declare that all glory and all honor and all power, all wisdom comes from you because it belongs to you. Tonight we ask for open heavens over this gathering. And then we ask for God our King because you sit as George, King and Father, our source and fountain of existence. That you will anoint your man servant, even your prophet afresh tonight. Afresh tonight, O oh God. That you will give him the unction to function tonight, my Father. That you will give him the tongue of the learned, the tongue and the wisdom that the enemy cannot gain say. By reason of your word, O oh God, let men find their place. This new year, my God, let it be an explosion, O oh God, of a harvest of souls. For we know, Jehovah, that it's not by our power, nor by our mind, but because your spirit is here, the seal that you have bought us with your precious blood. Father, tonight, we draw the bloodline around our gathering and we declare that there is no weapon formed or fashioned against anyone in this place that shall prosper. Lord, we speak to the souls of men to open up to receive the seed of the word of life. Today, our King, let the beauty of our God be seen in us. And so we thank you for the many that are for us, many more that are for us than they that are against us. We ask that you anoint drawn voices afresh, O oh God, that they will come and lead us into that realm of absolute worship and praise to you because you are the only God, because you are the only King, you are the only Judge, and you are the only Lawgiver we have. Tonight, take preeminence and have your way in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let there be rejoicing and clapping in the house of the Lord. It's a new year. It's a new day. Let's receive troubled voices as they come forth with shouts of praise to the King. Hallelujah. Somebody, can you lift up your voice and give the Lord a shout?
God of Shiloh. Oh, death. 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 Yeah. Since I was born, but now I am getting old. I have never seen the Lord changing.
neighbor. Are you ready? I want you to get your neighbor. Somebody scream! Hey! We are
No, no, I know what I'm saying. Go down. Sit upon the head of the year 57, 83. Because for sure, 84, we have entered. Hallelujah. It means whatsoever that have troubled you in the year 57, 83, the end of that history has come tonight. I say the end of that moment has come tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just lift up your right hand and say, Father, open my eyes to see great opportunity that I will not miss it. Open my eyes to see great opportunity and dive into it in a second. Can you just pray for yourself? Wherever you are, you are sitting down, pray for yourself, pray for your family, pray for your children. Say, Father, give us. Open our eyes to see that opportunity so that we will dive into it. And the Bible said, when Abraham said to the Haggai and Ishmael, the Bible recorded her, but Haggai kept Ishmael and she turned her back. That is when the water ran out. She turned her back for her not to see how Ishmael would die. Praise the living God. And what happened? The same Bible recorded that when Ishmael began to cry, God heard him. God hear his cry and did what? And said to Haggai, open your eyes. Can't you see the well? Hear me, ladies and gentlemen. That well has been there for 20 years. I repeat, that well has been there for 20 years. One more time, put your hand upon your eyes. Say, Father, open my eyes to see great opportunities and dive into it. Open my eyes. And the same Bible recorded that when God opened the eyes of Haggai, she saw the well and she drew the water and she served Ishmael. That was what saved him. That was what saved him. Open my eyes. Open the eyes of my children. Open the eyes of my wife. Open the eyes of my husband. To see great opportunities and dive into it. Because 57, 84 is a year of what we call explosion. It's a year of overtaking. It's a year mantles will be handed over to whosoever that is willing and ready to run. Hallelujah. The Bible said in the book of Revelations, praise God, and they overcame. They overcame. And this moment, there are one or few people that want to testify how they overcame. Praise the living God. How they did what? They overcame. Hallelujah. Somebody, hallelujah. I'm not hearing your hallelujah. Are you sick tonight? Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Praise the living God. I have here with me Manabel Charles. Brother Manabel Charles. Hallelujah. I have another one with me, Prophet Joshua Baba. Hallelujah. Where are you? Praise the living God. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. When you see the younger generation decide to say, I want to testify, it means there is future for the next generation coming after. Put your hands together for these ones. Put your hands together for them. Your name and what God has done for you. Good evening all. My name is Manabe G. Charles. I want to thank God for the success of my exam and guiding me through my just one, just two, and just three in Kaguru. It was not that easy because of the crisis in Kaguru. And two more strikes in my school. So my parents wanted to draw me out from the school, but they say that they didn't just leave me to when I finish my gesture. So I finished my gesture. As I was writing my exam, um, I was not allowed to follow balls because um, I and my classmates were not allowed to follow the balls because we are closing late. We are finishing our exam late. So we have to trick 
from Kagono to our houses. So I always try, try, try to save money for the next day. So, and I want to also thank God for, for provision that he granted my parents money for my school fees, my brother's school fees, and my sister's school fees. It was not easy because they were, they were not having anything in their account. Their account was empty. Even the food said, <laughs> we're not eating enough. Wow. I want to say to wow. God. Hallelujah. You don't understand that he trekked from Kagoro to their houses. People of God, can we just be on our feet and say, Father, thank you. Can we just be on our feet? You don't understand what it means. I see future in him. I see future in him. He drank all the way from Kagoro. For because of tomorrow, there are so many that will have excuses. Stretch forth your hands and declare a word over his life. Stretch forth your hands and declare a word. God is not slow. The book of 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 9. God is not slow. God is not slow. In case you think that he is slow over your life. No, tonight. Hear it. From this exalted altar. That God is not slow. Go ahead and give him praise. Father, thank you for these testimonies. Out of all, your son have come to testify. We say thank you. Even when there are no oil. You make way for him. You make way for him. You make way for him. Thank you, Jesus. There are many that are passing through such situation. Lord, we ask you will send an angel to come to their aid. In the name of Jesus. As you rise up from here, that is the report of 5783. And as you are rising, as we enter into 5784, it shall be a new story. That result will come out with colorful colors. As many that have written result exams in this season, get ready for wow. I say get ready for wow. Lift up your voice and just sound that shofar wherever you are. Can I hear the sound of a shofar? Thank you. We give you praise. In the name of Jesus, can we please take our seat? Praise the Lord. I'm taking you back to year 2003 that we, I came here for the crossover of 12, 20, I mean 2012 to, to I mean 2012. So when we came here, the vision pioneer professor um, told, informed us that we should come the next day. That's on the second, I mean on the second January 2003. So we came. He prophesied that yeah, I mean, he invited, I mean, the Southern Kaduna youth to come for the meeting. And that day, when we came, he prophesied. He said, he said that, let everyone tell what he's going to be in his life. So I then, I then said, God, I don't know what I'm going to be, but tell me. Around me there, a lot of people got what they are going to tell, tell, tell the Lord about, tell, talk about of, talk of it. But, but me, I cry, I say, God, I don't know what I'm going to be, but tell me. So that day, I didn't get it. The next day, I didn't get it. On the third day, that's when I, I was confounded a prophet. When I went into the, the spirit, I said, God, will you not tell me what I'm going to be before I get to my station? That time I was working with, uh, with local local government as a primary school teacher. So before you know it, I ran before Gumel. Then I had, when I I was asking God, and I had this, Satan was saying to me that you are late. And before I knew it, Jesus Christ said, get out, you are a prophet. So I want to thank God this even because of what God has done for me. He has done a lot that time will not permit me. But I give God the glory. Amen. Put your hands together for him. From tonight, from tonight, each and every one of us will have a specific encounter from the Lord. And our life will never remain the same. Don't forget from this exalted altar, I said, God is not slow. Those of us watching from the globe, all our social media, send your testimonies to those platforms. It will get to us. The Lord bless you. Put your hands together as I invite Apostle Charles into them for his testimony. Uh, 
Aleluia. Aleluia. The Lord is good. I say the Lord is good. I say the Lord is good. I have seen the goodness of the Lord. As you had my little child, they survived. I saw the goodness of the Lord. In the month of June, or May precisely, I started having pain in one of my throat here. It didn't start there. It started under here. It started under here. Very severe pain. That from my, for me to trek from my house to the ministry would be a problem. I would just be managing. Only few people know. There are some shoes I will not wear. I, most of the times I go with my pants. Sippers. So, after much time, I went to hospital. The doctor pres uh, prescribed uh, one ultimate doctor weight case. I applied it, I applied it. After a while, it was not good. They couldn't uh, identify what was the problem. Then, to cut it short, this June, a prophetic utterance came, a word of wisdom came from one of our brothers and the Fellowship, to our fellowship. There is somebody, Prof will remember the day. There is somebody that has a problem on his leg. The Lord is healing. So June passed. Coming to July, it was still there. Daddy, on this altar, say there is somebody that has a problem on his right leg. He was specific. He didn't know what is there, but the Lord said he is healing him. Then, we went. That night, the pen was there. In the morning, the pen was there. My wife took an oil, draw it to the door, say, Wakago. By then, it has left here and came to the one of the one spe specific, or the third one, the third two. The only the third two. My wife just draw it, draw it, draw it, Wakago, Wakago. As you don't waka Wakago. That thing continued. Then, in Abuja, I was about to testify, the pen was still there. I just left it. Coming to August, the first week or second week of August, I was in another situation that took my peace, which I will testify. Then the final of it is that when that pain, wakago, according to the language of my wife, I can't testify. I can't point out the very day it wakago. Praise the Lord. I can't testify. I can't mention the very day. But it went. Then that August, I was in a terrible situation. Some people know about my story about it. I was blessed. I am blessed with a gift from God. Then that gift, I met. I just was free with it to people. I gave it out time upon time. That's car. I lost two of new tires I bought because of some, something of that nature. Then for me, one. God bad. But two new but they caught in a way that I can't travel distance with it. I can't carry load with it. But then a situation came that my cousin that was the only blood relation I have that has ever come to see me in this land, that went to the mission field and vi visit me and my family. He's working about Abuja. By then he was with presidency. So we came back 2013. He came with his family and visited us. Last year, December, he came with his family and spent Christmas with us. But his father died at 103 this year. He called me dead. I need their car to go for this burial. I said, no, I will do it. Even before he called, when he called me and told me about the announcement about the death of the father, then I, that very morning I came to office, I told it to Pastor Mary, see what has happened to this my cousin, because she knows him. And I know he'll be in need of my car. He said, that will be good if I can do it. So before you know it, the next day he called. So to cut it short, this car was having problem of tires. I said, too, if I can be able to put the tires on, on, in order, then no problem. Then the barrier was to be 25th. Out of this, this was a date of mail. Then up, out of 4th of August, I have not gotten the tires. 5th, I have not gotten the tires. Every arrangement I made was not working out. So then I went into thinking. My children came back and showed me their result. 
I went into thinking, what I will pay for them to go back to school. We need a, a close 500 or 600,000. I was having, I had people who used to help me carry my children, my uh, financial problem. But you know the crisis of Nigeria. Everybody's having one issue or the other. So that became a burden to me. I was thinking of tire, how to raise three tires, put in motor and take it to Abuja for my cousin to take it up. I was thinking about that. I was thinking of, now of financial uh, money for school fees. I went and called BP on 8th of August precisely. I got BP. Somebody, his blood pressure had never risen above 110. This day was 158 over 100. Dr. Weke said, what happened, Apostle Jazz? I said, this is my situation. I didn't hide it. So thank God I have colleagues who can advise. Pastor, Apostle PK is there. Many people spoke to me. Many people spoke to me, even the hospital. So we are thinking cannot bring the money. So can you mellow down? My brethren, I mellowed down. And God took away that. By last Friday, when it was measured, when it was checked, it is now 120 over 80. The hospital clapped for me that my, my deputy, uh, Pastor Dan, is here. Even Pastor C, who is here, everybody spoke to me. Many people spoke to me, but the Lord answered, my, uh, answered, to, my, to, their, answered to my prayer that everything was made over. That today, I am sound. The issue of the uh, school fees, the Lord has raised it. There's no more blood pressure. And the Lord has done what he will do as God unto me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord will raise a standard for you in this season in the name of Jesus. I said the Lord will raise a standard for you in this season in the name of Jesus. Please look at somebody and tell him, welcome to this new year. If you're not angry with that person, tell him, welcome to this new year. Tell him it is 53, 53.84. 57, 57.84, sorry. Tell him it is 57.84. Say 57.84. Tell him the Lord shall raise an altar over your life. That shall bring all things to fulfillment in your life. Somebody say amen. amen. Please, I'd like you to just give me your ears as we're listening to these notices. Hallelujah. The WEPA, that is the woman wing of this ministry, will be having an all night coming on the 29th of this month, September 2023, at Barkin Ladi, that is in Plateau State. So please, okay, if you are celebrating, can you celebrate well? Now, this meeting is not just peculiar to women and Joss. It's a meeting that uh, has been put together to be a blessing for every woman, every man, as long as you can make yourself available. So please, let's pray, let's mobilize, and let's believe that the Lord will do great and mighty things in this night vigil. We are a witness of it in Abuja. I think we are the one handing over this button to Joss. So it was wonderful. So, men, don't just feel it's women meeting. There are some things you will want to know. And you can only know when you are there. So, please, we want to encourage men also to be part of this meeting. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Forms into Apocalyptical College. That is our Bible school. It's still on sale. Uh, you can get the form from the school. And the courses we offer are... Uh, Bachelor of Arts in Christian Religious Studies. We have Diploma in Prophetic and Biblical Studies. We have Certificate in Prophetic and Biblical Studies. We have Discipleship. Then we have Church Administration. We have Computer Appreciation for Pastors and Church Workers. So please, we want to encourage you have a brother, you have a sister, you yourself... You are here and you are convinced that God is calling you towards this direction. It's a wonderful place to be. It has produced many and many and many people uh, within and outside this community. So please, we want to encourage you. The form is available. Do see the school administration just at the upper, so at the other side.
And every one of us here is a minister. So please, we look forward to have you invite your church pastors, invite your reverends, invite um, uh, church workers, invite everyone who has to do something in the house of God. And I believe that God is doing special thing in this season with us. And that is why the theme for this program, uh, for this conference this year is the glory in Zion. Hallelujah. So please encourage as many. Then 23rd to 28 is the main conference. 23rd to 28 is the main conference. And the venue is Zion International Prayer Retreat Camp, Kafanchan, Kaduna State. This is where you are, in case you don't know. So please, we want to encourage you to invite as many. It's a feast. It's a moment of glory. And we desire that we come in glory. So please, let's mobilize our towers. Let's mobilize our friends, both within and outside the country, to be part of this conference. At this junction, I want to welcome the chairman of this conference to tell us more about the conference. God bless you as we celebrate his coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shall we be on our feet, please? I desire that you face someone. Just face someone because you are going to talk to that person. Can you tell that person that our conference is here? Will you come? And if you are coming, will you come alone? Or are you going to bring someone? I will advise that you come with someone. I will advise that you become an announcer. Go announce the conference. The theme of the conference is the glory in Zion. The glory in Zion. Come and partake of the glory that God has ordained for you in this season. In the name of Jesus. I didn't hear you say amen. I didn't hear you say amen. You may be seated. Now, as Pastor Sam has announced, 19th to 21st Ministers Conference. Can you say 19th to 21st Ministers Conference? I will be here. I will invite other ministers of the gospel. I will invite other ministers of the gospel even as I come. So Thursday, 19, and then 21st, Saturday, so that we will be released and we go back to our churches, particularly ministers that will go back to their churches and preach. Hallelujah. 23rd to 28th, say Monday 23rd, October, 2023 is when our international conference is beginning. I will mobilize others. I will mobilize others. Now, having done everything to stand, the Bible says, huh. please, you know, these conferences are not uh, run. If today you will ask yourself, or if you will ask our administrator, how much diesel she had put in that generator that we might have this meeting, then you know it's a lot. So we have food, we have everything. We have passed to the towers what they should do. Now, can I make an appeal? Those of us that... Do not go to our towers for fellowship. This time I will beg you 
please go find out what you are able to do. Hallelujah. Please, can we have the conference account? Conference account. Just put it on the screen. I want everybody to carry his biro and his paper. You know, the conference is here. We need everything that we are able to gather. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So put, can we have the conference account, please? There is nothing that is too small. Just get the conference account and drop that which God has laid in your heart. Now, but I tell you something. Whether you contribute or you don't contribute, God will do his conference. I didn't hear someone say amen. amen. God will do his conference. And as the theme of the conference is, the glory in Zion, it shall be a glorious conference. Oh, I didn't hear you say amen. amen. I say it shall be a glorious conference. By the hand of the Lord. Because he will raise men to do that which he desires them to do. And he will put resources in their hands. Please, bring food. Gather the people. Very, very important. Don't say you don't have anything to give. And as such, you won't be here. Gather the people. What did I say? What did I say? Can you make a promise that we will gather the people? We will announce to the people to come. Nobody is. Are we not committed, please? Can, can we rise up? Just rise up. Can you say, Heavenly Father? This night in the name of Jesus. I desire to be part of the conference this year. I shall be deliberate to make out time. I shall be deliberate to announce to the people to come. My Father and my God, as I speak to the people, Concerning this conference, you will, by the leading of the Spirit, O oh God, convince men and women for this conference. Thank you for what you will do. Please, my God, arise and do your conference by yourself. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, finally, you remember starting 29, because after today, we won't be here. On the 29th, we are starting a seven days fast. Please write it. Seven days fast, and I believe after this meeting, the prayer points will be sent out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Shall we all bring out our offerings? Hallelujah. Shall we just bring out our offerings this evening? Just wave your offerings to the Lord this evening. Just wave it unto God. Lift it and wave it before the Lord. Just tell the Lord, with this token, Lord, accept it from me. And Lord, bless my life this evening. Bless my life. I have come with my life as a token. I have come with an offering in my hands. Today, Lord, bless this offering in my hands, Lord. Let this new year open me to another realm that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, 
Not as it enter into the hearts of men. I connect to the doings of the Lord. I connect to what God is doing in this season. Lift it up and just pray to God. Just pray to God. Don't just give an offering without speaking a word to that offering. Speak a word to it. Send that offering for an errand. Declare today by this offering. I declare every difficult door is open. Every challenge today by this offering, Lord. My Father, answer it for me. In the name of Jesus, I come with this substance, Lord. Bible says, gather unto me, my people who have covenant with me by sacrifice. So, Lord, in the name of Jesus, by this sacrifice, Lord, arise and reach out to me. Arise, O oh God, with this offering in my hands, reach out to me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus, be honored. Be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. You're following us on all the social media platforms. The account number for this offering is on the screen. You can do well to give. And you're here, you want to give online or ele electronically. And please pay through the account number. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Shall we just drop our offerings at the front? Let's just take the first two rows. The first row at the front. Somebody shout hallelujah. Whoa. Come on. Wanting me that's a few. What is that we desire? And our dream was with you. Lord, come and change up. Everybody say, What is that we desire? What is that we desire? And our dream was with you. Lord, come and change up. Come and change up. What is that we desire? What is that we desire? Come on. What is that we desire?
Somebody shout hallelujah. Put your hands together as you take your seat. Put your hands together as you take your seat. Glory to God. And Jesus said, let the little ones come to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this point in time, I'm glad to invite the throne room kit for their presentation. Put your hands together for them. Wherever they are, put your hands together for them. Throne room kids, throne room children, put your hands together there. As they step, as they find yourself out from to this place, the faster you clap, as you keep clapping, as you keep clapping, you will see the soldiers and the gate of hell shall not prevail. You will see the soldiers that will bruise the hands of the serpent. You will see the soldiers that will become leaders of tomorrow. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. Good evening, parents. Good evening, brothers and sisters. We are the children kids. We are here for our presentation. As you listen and watch, may you remain blessed. Thank you.
your hands together for them and the shout shall not over hallelujah the throne room voices hallelujah Hallelujah. 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 Please, may we rise on our feet this evening. Can you just lift up your hands to the heavens this evening and just bless the name of the Lord? Lift up your voice in worship. Can you raise those sounds to heaven this evening? Can you just raise those hands to heaven this evening? Lift up your voice and exalt the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and worship his name. He is the almighty father. Jehovah is his name. There is none like him in heaven and on earth. He is the same yesterday, today, forever. There is none to be compared with him. If Jesus has healed you of diseases, if Jesus has given you life, if Jesus has set you free from the bondage of sin, if Jesus has been your father, if he is your Messiah, why not connect to the heavens and just bless the name of our Father? There is not to be compared with Him. He is Almighty. He is the only one who can turn around your situation. There is not like Him. He alone is God. He is God forever. He is God forever. Beloved, lift up your voice and bless the name of Jesus. Yeshua is his name. Yeshua is his name. Welcome to Zion, the city of the living God. Welcome to Zion, the city of the living God. Where Jehovah dwells. Can you just express yourself in worship? Can you just express yourself in worship? Let our worship flow out of the belly. Worship me. Bless the name of the Lord. If you have your shoppers, please can you just begin to sound. It's a new season. It's a new day. 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 Oh, arise, oh God, and let your enemies be scattered. Lift up your heads, all you gate, and be you lifted up your everlasting doors, that the King of Glory will rule and reign. We bless your name. Can you just lift up your hands to heaven and connect to him? Inaya, bosu nan 
Of a voice and say, Nayabo, Ina, Ina, Yabo, Sekachi, Sekachi. Can you shout it and say in your voice? Can you raise a voice to the king? Manakarapato Sapatia Le Prende Bosia da Balade, Niana Manakalaba, Sierra Balada, Rebosa da Barra, Diana Barana Manako Sadabala, Rabalade, Siata Copanade, Hiana Barade, Siana Made, Canteva, Diatabade, Sierra Baca Parade, Sadabania. Can you say?
Can you lift up your hand and say, Inayabo, Inayabo, Sunaka Yesu. Oh, Sekachio, 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 Inayabo, Between the 
heaven and the earth, Nigeria and her, her answered prayer, Africa and her answered prayer, North America, China, have come and her answered prayer, Russia, Ukraine, whatever stands between them and their answered prayers, Israel, Today, as God opens the gate and releases a new star over Israel, let the gates break open. It is the year of doors. Can you tell the Lord to break your own door open? Open my door. Everything that stands between the transmission, your ability to reach me, let that thing be broken. Anything that stands between me and your ability to reach me. Can you tell the Lord if it is my sin, tear it away. But let nothing stand between us. If it is a sin, so what are they to tear it away? I invoke the blood. Light of what a glory is shed on our way. Where we do his good will in the bright stream. say heavenly father you said i am your candlestick today 
I come here as a candlestick. Light up my life for me. The same way I have lit up this candle. It is my candle. Light me up today. Let every darkness that has overwhelmed me fall away. Fall away. Throw it away. Remove it from my shoulder. You said I am the light of the world. I want to manifest the true light. Which is Christ in me, the hope of glory. In the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Light me up now. Jesus Christ the Messiah. Light me up now. Jesus Christ, Son of David, light me up now. Light me up now. Because you said with your own mouth, I am the light of the world. Let all darkness disappear now. In the name of Jesus. Whatever will not go willfully, set it on fire by the covenant of this candle. Burn them out of my life tonight. Spiritual, spiritually and physically, set my spirit free. In Jesus' name. Can, can somebody shout amen? Raise it above your head. Can you say today, Lord? Let this fire never burn in my life. Never cease to burn in my life. Or in my house. Or in my destiny. Until every word of yours is fulfilled in my life. I enter into covenant on this first day and making them rule in my life. I receive the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Every other curse of Satan be broken. Every other broken by the covenant of this light be set on fire now by the spirit of burning be burnt out of my life in the name of Jesus can somebody wave that and shout amen can somebody wave that and shout amen can you open your mouth and begin to worship the Lord just bless the Lord again and tell him to hear the cry, the voice of your heart. You will hear the cry of the voice of your heart. Thank you, Lord. Now you will do something. You're quenched. Our light will not cease to shine. Our glory, our prosperity. The Bible says you do not light a candle and put it under the bed or a bushel or a lamp. No. Today you are putting the lamp in front of you. Your light will shine whether Satan likes it or not. Whether your enemies like it or not, you will shine. Anything that has refused you to shine, let this candle release a fire to burn it. Today, let God enter into contention with whatever will not allow your family to shine. Amen. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Jesus said, we are the light. 
of the world. Far in Chiki, in the far in Chiki, are I now far in Chiki, in the far in Chiki. Oh, since I see a nasty answer, in the far in Chiki, Hallelujah, since I see a nasty answer, in the first children here, even if they are grown up and they are walking, and the father is here, if you are a first son and your father is in this crowd today forget that you are a general manager somewhere, go drag your father out, you and your father should come out here, and your mom if they are here if your child is a small child and is a firstborn, bring the child out and I want you to get ready because we are entering into a very serious season first children I'm not talking by faith. Eh, there is no, I'm talking about physically. If you are a first child, bring yourself out. I'm talking about firstborn child in your father's house. Male or female. Bring yourself out. If your own first child is here, bring the first child out with you. And if you may, carry your anointing oil. If you don't have one, they will try to see whether they can get you one. Mark chapter 11 verse 4. Listen, tonight, tonight is a night when the doors in your life that actually control your life is going to open. When the secret of your dwelling will open up and the word of the Lord will go throughout the end of the earth. And will tell the earth, mark my son, mark my daughter. Whatever she desires, give it to her. I didn't hear somebody say amen. amen. So tonight, God is marking his church. Tonight, God is marking Israel as a firstborn. Amen. Afresh. I'm talking about the physical Israel. You know, I was shocked. In the midst of the war in Ukraine, they have never had this number of Jews flying into Ukraine to start the new year. And then interestingly, in the midst of the insecurity in Israel, again, their airports are filled up with Jews 
all over the world, fulfilling prophecy, going back home to start a new year. And they are coming with their children and their families. There is something about the coming year that carries the mystery of the foundations and the essence of man and creation. Today, your portion will not miss you. Your destiny will not elude you. Anything that stands in between in the secret place that your hand cannot control, the hand of the Lord will find it tonight. I said the hand of the Lord will find your dwelling tonight. And the Lord will move away the thing that needs to be removed. And the Lord will gather for you. Everything that should be gathered. Can you wave to the Lord and shout amen? Amen. Where are those assisting me? If I said they would supply them with oil, somebody should be here to answer my cry. Can you organize yourself? When I give a cue to something, let the answered prayer be standing by. Can you pour the oil into three of the bowls for those who don't have an oil? And if you are here, you must not be a firstborn. Eh? If you are part of the firstborns that should be dedicated, go back to the crowd. Today is not your day of service. Listen, in Israel, I say today, your contradictions are over. Today, the wickedness that you do not understand that has manipulated and controlled your environment. Today, the light will burn it out. Right now, while you are standing, let your miracle begin. Let your doors begin to open. Your secret places begin to unlock. Any secret that is speaking against you, may the Holy Ghost expose them tonight. May the Holy Ghost make them stand before the thrones of judgment. That is the significance of the year we are entering. It is to unlock the deep and make everything stand before the the divinity of God. The God of all creation. All the prophecies I made in this millennium, when we whether from Port Harcourt to Abuja to Lagos. Somebody sent me that of Abuja on my mail about two months ago, Pastor Silas Yaku. And he said, do you recognize this prayer? You prayed in Abuja. He was not part of that meeting. But somebody sent it to him because they sense the season of that prayer is now. Listen, the angel who carries the mystery of unlocking this millennium is going to start operating in this fourth year. So whatever is waiting to be fulfilled in your life, he will find them where they are. He will gather them to you. And your life will take a new meaning. I say your life will have a new meaning. Your destiny will begin to redefine itself. Somebody say redefine yourself. Oh destiny of mine. Rediscover me. Rediscover me. Rediscover my life. Rediscover the purpose of my life. I receive the visitation of the Holy Ghost and all the angels of ministry tonight in the name of Jesus. I didn't hear somebody shout amen. Amen. Just before you pass that oil, just stand where you should stand. 
Every one of you will touch the oil. If you are a firstborn, anoint yourself. If you are not a firstborn, anoint your firstborn. Don't touch yourself. If you touch yourself, you have replaced your firstborn. Did you hear the meaning? Uh -uh. And don't stand here on behalf of your firstborn if you are not a firstborn. There is no standing on behalf of anybody. So go back to your seat. Today is a hallowed sacred day. You don't stand on behalf of anybody. When I told you come with your children, I didn't need to beg you and announce everything. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. So if you really fear the Lord, something will tell you there is something that is about to happen. Because firstborns are going to be attraction in this season. God is going to look for them how to showcase them and to make them for a sign, make them for a language. By them, he will speak to the earth. So when he blesses you, he's speaking to the earth. Did you hear what I, I just said? By them, he will speak to the earth. Interestingly, tonight, this first day, of the month of Tishrael, 5784, the new year of Israel, the nation of Israel. It is believed in the Jewish tradition that tonight was the night that Abraham found life and reconnected with the hidden secrets. Of the covenants of the oath of the Lord. By take and shout amen. amen. The Lord has visited me. I didn't hear you say amen to that. Amen. Just like the only first begotten of God was, was sacrificed. And by that sacrifice, earth received life. Just like the firstborn of Egypt was killed and the firstborn of Israel was redeemed. Everything concerning the firstborn is being settled tonight. Interestingly, the same Mount Moriah where that ceremony between God and Abraham took place is where tonight all of Israel is gathering at the wailing wall. And singing songs throughout the night and blowing shofars and declaring the new day and testament, testament of the Lord over their lives. It's an interesting coincidence, if it is a coincidence. The same mountain of the release of the firstborn. Now, I told them to put Mark 11, 4. You want to know the year 5784, number 4? What it stands for, what it's crying out for. Look at that scripture. And they went their way and found the cult tied by the door. Can you put verse 3 so that the people understand what we are talking about? Okay, go back to verse 2. And said unto them, Go your way into the village over against you. And as soon as you be entered into it, ye shall find a call tied, whereon never man sat. Lose him and bring him. Somebody say, lose, lose him and bring him. Bring him. Tonight, Tonight, when you anoint your head, a spirit is going to descend and proclaim over your life. Lose him. Lose him Amen. and bring him. Amen. Because God wants to use him. God wants to speak. God wants to showcase himself. God wants to buy him. Do a new thing in the earth. He's a symbol of relief. You have been sacredly prepared to fulfill prophecy, whether they are firstborns or not. People who have been prepared to fulfill prophecy, to do something in nations, to become the reason why nations turn around. That means there is a secret thing going on in Nigeria today and a messenger has been sent to cut Nigeria loose. 
If you believe that for Nigeria, wave to the Lord and shout, Amen. Amen. Wave to the Lord and say, So let it be done. So let it be. In Jesus' name. Can somebody shout, Amen. He said, lose him. Today, if you have been at the mercy of anybody, I release the word into your life. Lose him. And let him come to me. I don't care whether you have been a rascal. Your children have been rascals. Today, the word is, lose him. And let him come to Lose him. Lose him. There is an, a decree of loosening. So when you touch that oil, you are released to answer to him. Your life becomes the sacred oil of God. And no man may intervene with your destiny from now. Anybody that intervenes with your destiny has to fight God. Has to meet God. And I didn't hear somebody shout a tremendous amen. The oil is a sign of very dedication. So by the time you push that oil, you are declaring that you are, you are the Lord's own. The divine hand. You are renewing the covenant of what? Ownership. I am owned by the Lord. So anything else, wait on the play with my life. Oh yeah, leave me alone. The owner has need of me. That is what that Mark 11 was all about. He said, and said unto them, go your way unto the village. Can you go to verse 3? It says in verse 3. And if any man say unto you, why do you this? Any man or spirit or demon. Why do you do this? Say ye, the Lord had need of him. Anything that's attached to you. That has not allowed you find find meaning. Because the Lord needs you now. I break away the power of that thing. I release the oil to cut off that thing in the name of Jesus. Can you wave and shout amen? amen. And straight away. He will send him hither. Straight away. That demon that troubled you will release you to go and serve your purpose. That thing that has been confusing your life is releasing you now to go and serve your purpose. It's the chain that goes with this fourth year. It's the year of release to connect. I yoke my life to what you are doing. I hand over myself to you. I hand over my house. Tonight, every first fruit in my house be released. As my child is released. As my own soul is released. Every first fruit in my life. Every first fruit of my blessings. Everything you have blessed me with. In property, in houses, in human beings. In the name of Jesus. By the oil that I received tonight. I decree them released. So I want you to have it in your heart what you are doing. That by touching yourself, everything that is a first fruit belongs to the Lord. You are declaring them what? release to answer to his divine purpose divinity it's about the divine i'm going to teach i'm going to show you that in a moment when you go back to sit but we have to unlock the door the way we are unlocking it now did we did you hear what i just said can you pass the oil around you will touch the oil if you are the firstborn anoint your own forehead and anoint your breath. You don't touch the oil twice. It's only one. So if you are touching with three fingers. Touch with three. Anoint your head. Anoint your breath. And breathe that in. And start praying for yourself. A prayer of dedication. Lord I losing myself to you. Now losing me. To do your will. 
I release my soul willingly to you. Losing me to do your will. Your will will I do on earth as it is in heaven. Can you now release yourself to him? As you anoint your head, anoint your breath. Just pass the oil around. And if you are watching on television, please go ahead and do that. I'm sorry that I didn't acknowledge you when I began. My spirit is already in the things that God has shown he will do in the coming season. Great and tremendous things. Great and tremendous things. Nobody like the Lord. Great and mighty is our God. You will take it with a powerful voice. Great and mighty is our God. Oh, oh. great and mighty is our God. Great, great and mighty is Great and mighty is our God. says, if any man say unto you, why do ye this? And today I answer every spirit that is asking, why are we doing this? And I'm placing a demand on that spirit, because the Lord has need of you tonight. Therefore, I release you to answer the Lord. That is why we are doing this. He says, say ye that the Lord had need of him. Him. God did not say it to the cult or to the ass. Mm -mm. He said what? Somebody say him. He was referring to a spirit and a dispensation. A messenger of heaven. That cult, that ass was not an ordinary ass. From today you cease to be an ordinary person. You are the demand of heaven for the good of the earth. And straight away he will send him hither. He will release him to, to, to me. So I demand. Anything that has measured portions that don't belong to you. Let them release you now. Can you shout release me now. My hour to answer the call has come. In Jesus name. I didn't hear somebody shout amen. Verse 4, the Bible says, And they went their way and found the cult tied by the door. Ah, that is not the place of the cult, the door. Where are you tied now? That is not your place. Oh yeah, I command that rope to break now. Can you say, my soul break off now? From where I am right now. And release me to the place of the Lord. And from now henceforth. In the name of Jesus. Remain in the place of the Lord. Can you shout amen to that prayer? So you see willingly. You have released yourself. It was tied to a door. It was not supposed to be at a door. 
two, it was a virgin cult. Nobody had ever ridden on it. It was a first fruit cult. A firstborn cult. Nobody has ridden in. in look, he says, he says, and they went their way and found the cult tied by the door without in a place where two ways met. Now, listen to me. If all of you will hear the assignment of the Lord, I'm giving you an assignment from the beginning of this meeting tonight. When you go back home, you will take your anointing oil, declare a fast. In this first week of this new year, so whether it's tomorrow, Monday, or Tuesday in the first week, declare a fast. Go into the places where two roads or three roads meet in your city. Anoint it and command the earth to release the issues of your life. Amen. Wherever your inheritance is hidden, I decree losing it for me. But when you do that, can you also demand that for your nation? So, whether you are in Nigeria, demand it for Nigeria. If you are in America, demand it for America. Zimbabwe, demand it. But they send them to a place where two roads meet. For the covenant of release to be established. The covenant of release was not established when the cult was brought. The covenant of release was established in the place where it was taken. Where two roads meet. There you will decree that anything on this earth that has held your life bound, break. Curse witches and command them to wither. Curse the witchcraft of your families. Command them to wither. Curse the witchcraft of your friends and acquaintances. Of the marketplace. So it's accompanied with a prophetic action. Because this is the year of the release of the saints. For Jesus to start his ministry in Jerusalem, a cult had to be released. For him to conclude his work on the earth. The instrument he will use to write had to be released. That's why I said, this, is, this year is the year of the release of everything. The beginning of the release of everything that should speak in this millennium. Up till now, God has been preparing the ground. But for now, it is movement from now. Things ordained to talk will talk. Presidents ordained to, pre to preside will preside. Those who are meant to be removed will be removed. Things will begin to speak. Because the divine... It was for this purpose Jesus was sent. The divine will begin to speak. When God told me that I couldn't sleep that night, he said, my son, 84 is not an ordinary gate. It's not an ordinary door. That which had been from the ancient will, will visit the earth to begin to prepare the ground. For the final day. So I am placing a demand for release. For people of destiny. That night I couldn't sleep. So if you have retired yourself. Go back take your armor. Clean up yourself. Ask for forgiveness. And report for duty. The, us. Or. What they call the cult there. Or what they call the ass in some other versions. Or the small donkey is being released to answer his call that no man had claimed. It says, and they went their way and found the call tied by the door without in a place where two ways met. And they loosed him from the grip of two ways. Some of you are here. You are still confused. You don't know where to go. You are neither there nor there. You have been drawn by two ways. I break the curse of that battle. I release the finger of the Lord to deliver you from two thinkings. From division, two visions. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
So when you go, tell God to deliver you from division. The struggle between two things. Your heart wants to do this. Your spirit is saying no, it's the other thing. You don't know what to do. You will know what to do when you get out of this place. Yeah. Two ways met. He said, bring, remove him from those two ways. You will anoint the ground where they meet. You will command that the, destiny, the secret things of heaven for the nations be opened. Pray for the nations of the earth. If you like, use the whole week praying. After that first day. But the first day you must pray for yourself. Pray for your family. Pray for everyone you love. Anoint the ground at the end of that day and say, God, arise and shake up things. Things that I can see and the ones I cannot see. The one I have control over and the one I don't have control over. Shake them up. Did you hear what I said? Meaning that this year is the year of Amos chapter 9 verses 1 to 4. He said, smite the lintel of the door. Those gates are all lintels of the door. And he said, and the place will quake. It will shake. And God said, from that time, I will go searching the secret place. Everything that stood in the way of destiny, I will cut off. Whether in the river, in the mountains, in the sea, in the air, I will find them. In the sea, I will command my serpent to kill all of them. That's what Amos 9 says, verses 1 to 4. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Go and do that is a prophetic assignment. That's why I ordered everybody should come. Now, if you brought your son out, put your hand or your daughter out, first child, put your hand on them. And then if you are a first child yourself, put your hand on your head. If it is double, your own first child and you are a first child, put one hand on your child, the other one on your own head. It's double. My father, according to your command tonight, Alma si hu asken dunia bege duka masura Yesu aso kama. Can you put the English version on the screen if you have it? Today, any spell that has cast a shadow around your life, I am commanding that spell to break away from you now. Today, anything you are grappling with that is stronger than you, I am commanding the hand of that thing to be cut off. Yeah. Let deep call to the deep in your life now. Yeah. I say let deep call to the deep in your life now. Yeah. Let your life be released to answer the call. Yeah. Be released to answer the call. Yeah. Be released to fulfill prophecy. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. I didn't hear somebody shout amen. Amen. Yeah. Listen, for it is written, all first fruit, all firstborn is mine, said the Lord. Therefore, I release the word of the Lord to release you now. To answer the call of ownership of the one who owns you. Therefore, every spirit that has translated itself into his place, 
Ah! Let the seat of that spirit in your life catch fire. Any sickness that is trying to displace the Lord, let that sickness break off and leave you now. Let the serpent in your body be destroyed now. Thank you, Father. Now, listen. Tonight, where is that oil? You will forgive me, I'm not doing this in any order. And I'm not supposed to be staining your dresses. But in the name of Jesus, I release the oil of the Lord in the air. To break curses where there are curses. But above all, to declare release in every place where you need release. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Therefore, by the law of sprinkling, I raise an altar and I decree today that there is a shift from where you are into where you should be. Tonight, every law contrary to the law of the Holy Ghost that has tied you by a string somewhere where you should not be. Let that law be broken now. Let your spirit release you to answer the sacred call of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. You'll be wondering why I'm sprinkling today. I'm invoking a spiritual law of sprinkling. The altar was sanctified by sprinkling. The water was redeemed by sprinkling. Even in the book of Hebrews in the New Testament. That is why at a point the living faith church began to do sprinkling. And when they were condemned, they stopped it. But listen, it was not meant to be done as a ritual. There is a season when the doors are broken open. In those high seasons of the law, it is allowed. It's not a Sunday service thing, every Sunday service thing. I want you to listen because this is very important. By the sprinkling of water also, you are delivered from all your idols, according to the book of Ezekiel. From every idol that has become something else in your life. Today, its yoke is broken. Amen. That is part of the law of sprinkling. The spirit behind sprinkling. Then lastly, it's a declaration of cleansing. Of release. Therefore, by that oil, every ground that will not let you go, let it be judged now. Amen. Let its fire begin to burn it out in the name of Jesus. Can you wave to the Lord and shout, Amen? Amen. Therefore, by that law of sprinkling, I attach you to the covenant of the season. Amen. That wherever you are, enter, the earth will hear the oil. Amen. The earth will hear the water. Amen. The earth will hear the blood of Jesus. 
and then the earth will hear the voice of the Holy Spirit that speaketh. Receive this ordinance of heaven. And by it, let your life speak a new thing. Can you say in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, I receive the gift of life and the release of life unto me now. In Jesus' name. Can you breathe in and shout amen? Now, I want you to go back to your seats because there are a lot of things we need to do and we will pray about. But I needed to start here because the most important part of this year is release. Is release. It's not about the door. It's about what will happen when the door is open. Number four. Is from the word Dalet in the Hebrew language. It means door. But it also means chaff. C H A double F. I repeat, it means door. It also means chaff. C H A double F. I wanted to say double F F. It's double F. Chaff. And those of you who know the meaning of chaff, you remember the chaff from corn, when you take your corn to grind, and the, 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 the cover peels off. It's called chaff. That's the one they feed uh, a ladu uh, pig sweet, or swine sweet, the chaff from corn. There is a chaff also from rice. There is chaff from a lot of crops. Chaff. Now, most times until this day when chaff is sold, chaff, when you throw it away, is meant to be carried away by the wind. The wind blows it away. Chaff. Chaff is what the seed does not need to carry out its work. falls off, the seed gives life to another person. When you eat the seed, you receive life. So the work of the seed is to give life, not to take away life. And in these last days when God is healing everything, even the chaff is giving life to some other people. That's the interesting thing about the chaff. Now, if you go to Daniel chapter 2, I want you to see the secret behind this year. Before I, I proclaim Shannat over, over you. But I want you to see part of the secret. I started with Mark 11. But I want you to see Daniel Chapter 2, M-O-T-E, the log. You know, the Bible says in the New Testament, first of all, remove you hypocrite. Remove the log from your eye. Now, listen. The problem about not removing the log is that you will become blind. The log will make you blind. The moat will make you blind. It will poison your eyes, and you will become blind. <laughs> now, listen. This is a year that by the mystery of God those who have been made blind to their destiny will suddenly begin to see. Amen. Those that by Wayo had been tied down over the years like that ass. The witchcraft of that Wayo is going to be broken this year. Suddenly they will understand where they are. This apostle was released from prison. He didn't know where he was going to. He just followed an angel blindly. And suddenly he found himself on a street called Straight. 
That means up till that time, he didn't know what was happening. Until that time. Ah, today you will find yourself on your own street. Amen. That God had appointed. Amen. Daniel chapter 2, because I'm still coming back there. So those are the three definitions of the year. The first major dialect is the door, the image of the door. That is what you see first. That is why on every door you came in through, there was a door. It is symbolizing the spiritual door. You came in, this is the first thing that in all the doors, we used to put there and there. We don't put here. But all the doors have a door. You go through the spiritual to enter the physical. Did you hear what I just said? Listen. If the physical door was blocking you, I command it to be replaced with the spiritual. Yeah. It becomes easier to go through the physical after you have entered the spiritual. So I'm changing the doors of your life now. Life now and the padlocks that locked those doors. Yeah. Your enemy would know when you have entered. Yeah. Because there is a replacement this year of the spiritual. Help is coming. Help is replacing the physical for us. Look at what happened. There was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together. You will understand this year like this. And became like what? The chaff. The chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away. That no place was found for them. The wickedness that has troubled you up to now. No place will be found for that wickedness. Did you hear what I just said? So even if it wants a place to settle. There will be no place. No place. The wind carried them away that no place was found for them. And the stone, not the word the stone, because I'm coming back there again. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. For each one of, God, of you, God is sending a spirit that will not only smite your, your bondage, but will turn you into a great mountain. That will fill the earth. The same hand that starts the process of the change of your garments. That same hand will exalt your throne of honor. Amen. And put you where no man can touch you. Amen. How many of you are understanding this season now? So it's a season of deep spiritual activity. Exchange. Changes. Like I will say. You will forgive me. Because that was what I told the Lord. I said Lord. It means it's a season of the father. When the father's heart is unveiled to the son, the father's heart prevails on behalf of the son. When it is no longer my will, but your will being done in my life, or your will being done through me. When my power is broken down, so that his strength can lift me up and put me in the place where I should be. Can you say, so let it be with me, Lord? Now, that is what is happening in this season. The Father's will. So pretending over all things. The Father's will overseeing all things. The Father's will interfering with all things physically. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. If you read a few verses earlier, it says the stone was cut out from heaven without hands. And the same stone came gravitating from heaven. That means God is going to throw a stone to destroy the graven images that have tied the cult. The same way he sent human beings to untie the cult from the door. What are you doing in the door? 
The same question God asked Elijah. Elijah, what are you doing here? You are not supposed to be here. He said, Lord, that woman, that witch, she threatened me and I was afraid of her. Is that why you are here? And it's the question I'm asking you. What are you doing where you are doing? I mean, where you are. Who put you there? Is it that witch? Or you are your own witch? Your own disobedience put you there. Those are questions you need to answer in this season of this new year. Why am I where I am? Have I contributed to being where I am? Can you face yourself in the mirror? Have I contributed to being where I am? Lord, release that rock to cut me off from where I am now. And turn me the mountain that I should be. But for you to move forward in this coming season, you must answer that question. No. Why am I where I am? My dog, Kakine, Kai Kadai, my dog, me. You are everything, all in all. All in all. Why am I where I am when I have a God that is my covenant? We need to answer that question. Because this month is helping us answer it. It's helping us pull off from attachments we should not be attached to. From places we should not be in. If you have lost your promotion, it will come double. If you are able to answer that question, your riches will change overnight if you can answer that question and pray through it. Everything about your life will be redefined. Why am I where I am? Is this where I'm supposed to be? That ass was not where it was supposed to be. It was only delayed there for a season. Like that messenger was arrested by another principality and God had to send a release. So the messenger can connect with Daniel. That is the exchange going on in the spirit realm this year. 57, 84. That is the exchange. That is the manifestation. Those are the key texts, scriptures of the year. Of course, the third scripture of the year is John chapter 10. Jesus said, I am the door. I am the door. It's about the door. And that door is Jesus. So, if you don't have Christ, there is no means by which you can unlock and access the secrets of this life this year. Did you hear what I just said? Why? Because he says I'm the door. Read the whole chapter. I'm going to read a few verses there. But read the whole chapter. That is the third three scriptures. The third main text around which this year evolved. Mark 11, Daniel 2, 35, Mark 11, 2 to 6, Daniel 2, 35, and John chapter 10, starting from verse 2. John 10 verse 2. He that entered in, where? By the door. That's why I said there is a spiritual door. You came in through a door made of palms. A spirit door before you enter the physical one. You were not allowed to enter the physical one until you have entered the spiritual one. Jesus said, I am the door. He said, he that entered in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. 
And of course, verse 9, they had put verse 9 earlier there, thinking I was jumping there. But go to verse 3. What does verse 3 say? To him, the potter opened, and the sheep hear his voice, and he called his own sheep by name, and does what? Leaded them out. He leads them out. My friend, have you truly entered through the door or you are still trying to make up your mind? Today you must ask the door, who is Jesus to open to you? So that you can go through in, so that your life can begin to respond to your destiny, your personal life. Can begin to act up, open up now to blessing. So your blessing will come and will not, it will not add sorrow. So that it will not bring problems for you. He says, I am the door. This year, no witch shall be able to stand the power of our God. I can give you that assurance. So it is a season when your days are being revisited and redefined. That's why I said, call everybody you love for this meeting. Because the door... The shepherd is opening his gates. This is my story. This, this is, is my, my song. Praising my Savior. writing, write this. This is a mysterious year that will cause blindness for some. And will cause sight for others. For the temple of the Lord will decide alone what should be in each life, not man. For the temple in heaven alone will decide what should be. For each life, each living thing God has created, not man. So today, whatever in your life that needs any law that needs to be suspended, let it be suspended. Any blindness that should come for a season, like the Bible says, blindness is come for a season. And let it come for that season. By the time their eyes are opened, your promotion will have taken place. That is what I see happening to some of you. They will forget fully promote you. And then when they realize it, they cannot repair it. It is too late. I didn't hear somebody say amen. They will do what happened in the time of Pilate. When he wrote King of the Jews, he said, no, 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 no. He said, what has been written has been written. I'm not changing it. 
It's too late to protest. That is what is going to happen to quite a number of you here. Those who had the power to block you before they realize you will have found yourself in a new place and then they will say it's a mistake. They will go back to appeal and they shall be answered what has been done has been It's a mysterious year. So part of the agenda of the Holy Spirit in this season is to break down graven images. Anything that shares glory with God or glory against God shall be broken down. Everything. Now, let me just read some of the things, these things here. Of course, we know that number five, 5784, is the number of grace. Number seven is a sovereignty. of the Godhead, of God himself. That means God has a right to disagree with you and to disagree with other gods. The sovereignty of the Godhead. Even against the body, the, God will walk, the Godhead can walk and will walk. When the body is reluctant to follow, the Godhead will still do what he will do. Number eight, I saw a vision that frightened me in the night. I've never seen it before. I've been talking about 57, 80 something, 80 this, 80 that, 80 that. But when it came to this year and I was going to proclaim 57, 84, I saw the Lord say that that eight is a double four. This year, that number eight is going to form a government to see to it that God's will is fulfilled. And I said, wow. I repeat, it's going to become a double four to represent the oath of the Lord, the covenant of the Lord, the government of heaven. To see to it that koda meene ubangi jiache akai na dolis yifaru. Now listen. <laughs> it is in this year that Netanyahu and Putin are going to come into the fullness of their reign. Fifty-seven eighty-four. That which they ought to change on earth will be changed completely by force. Putin, Netanyahu, I didn't say Putin, Jelinski, and I didn't say Putin and Kui or Kui or she or Z, whichever way you pronounce him, whether Z, X, I, Z, they pronounce it as Z. How many of you know who is Z? Z is the president of China. His name is Z. They are the ones running now. Z. You can see Putin doing new alliances because that's what is happening in the heavens. New alliances. New governments and agreements. It's a year of agreements, alliances. Seasons of a realignment. So who are you befriending now? Can you go and change your friends? Your alliance will decide where you go, how far you go. Somebody called me in the U.S., one of the sisters there, on behalf of her husband, and said, how can we repair the damage we have done? 
We know we have offended you. And I replied, it's not in my power. To repair or not to repair? He that formed alliances. Covenant, double covenant. Jehovah Jireh. The Lord shall see to it. He that sees to covenants. Only he can repair covenants. Suddenly, Russia is by parting Z, the Chinese president, and entering into agreement directly with North Korea. It's not done like that. All the arms in North Korea were sponsored by China, if you don't know. It's Chinese technology. But he is releasing more missiles than China every year. As if they are just toys. This costs billions of dollars. The rate at which he releases it makes America look like a poor country. I'm talking about that young man in North Korea, the president of North Korea. The rate at which he releases missiles make America and Russia look like child's play. They are like their children. But it's not their money. It's Chinese money. It's Chinese technology. It's like in the years of the Cold War. You use your body language to do diplomacy. You use proxies to undermine others. And you say, I'm not the one who did it all. You slap me and clean your mouth. And say, I'm not doing that is what is happening now. They are using North Korea. So when the man laughs, three nations are laughing. Because it's not the power behind it. Now, those kind of mysterious alliances will be taking place. There are people you'll be hearing talking in Nigeria. They are not the ones talking. Somebody sent me a tape of a spiritual leader who was telling his followers. If you want to cause trouble, go and cause the trouble, but don't tell us. When the time comes, we will defend you. We will see who will touch you, who will deal with that person. Proxies. Today, is that a secret arrow? arrow? Shutting down your door and won't let you out. Today, in the name of Jesus, let the arrow pierce the heart of the owner. your spirit be released from that prison in the name of Jesus can you wave and shout amen somebody here somebody who caused that your problem has died I didn't hear somebody say amen I'm not saying he's afflicted. I heard the Lord say, he has died. Amen. That means within the next two to three months, you will hear the news. Amen. Receive your release in the name of Jesus. Amen. I didn't hear somebody shout, Amen. Russia, Russia bypasses or Putin. Putin, Putin bypasses China and calls this young North Korean man for a handshake. Do you know the meaning of that? It's indirectly telling you, I will give you more money to do more arms but for Russia this time. Since you are a midwife of arms, you give to Caesar what is Caesar's, give us what is our own. You give to China their own. You have become a manufacturing industry for everyone who wants to conspire against the God of heaven. So we'll make you a pit, a Hades, from where hell is unleashed upon the earth. Oh, you now do arms that can reach America? We're going to give you money to do arms that can reach Israel. 
Have you not noticed that in the last few days, Putin has been accusing Israel? Oh, you are not following the news. As if Putin knew that Israel is about to enter New Year. In the last two days, particularly, he got alarmed by the many Jews, in spite of the bombs falling, that were going to Ukraine. If they kill one of them, the Holocaust has begun. So Putin is attacking both the Holocaust and the people of Israel. Prophecy is being fulfilled in our eyes and we don't know. All this restlessness in Africa is a shaking into change alliances and to break chains. It's not going to be for the advantage of any nation. All these superpowers who are boasting are going to lose the battle. China, Russia, we are not going to be anybody's slave anymore. Amen. I didn't hear somebody say amen. Why? Because the owner has come. The owner is showing his face. This oil is anointing you to himself. Bring that ass to myself. So watch it. Confusion is going to bet confusion until a new day is announced. I don't know whether that is the same world war going on in your life. Today, nobody will call you his slave. I break the power of that person in the name of Jesus. It goes with the law of release. I repeat, it goes with the law of release. So God said, watch it. All of them are going to claim their war horses. The height of their powers are coming within this next three years. 5784, 5785. By within three years, they will have finished their work. Those who will die will die. Those who will stay will stay. But within three years, Putin, Netanyahu, and I ask God, where is the place of America? He said, America will follow where the wind goes. I said, what do you mean by that? It means America will not be the sign. Did you hear what I just said? Israel will be the sign. Russia will be the sign. You will be the sign. The church will be the sign. Can you stand up and say, Holy Ghost, shake out now, shake out of my body every law of enchantment every ordinance of life that is tying me down in the wrong place shake out now I rebuke them in Jesus name open your mouth and begin to rebuke them out of your life can you give me this volume properly shake them out shake them out tell God shake them out every ordinance of life that has taken me captive anywhere, whether in the secular, in the spiritual age. Take over ownership. I said, take over ownership. For the day of the Lord is here. Can you tell the Lord my meat is to do your will. While it is yet day. 
before that night comes when no one can do your will. Tonight, I remove my life from the place of the night into the place upon this earth, upon this stone, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against this rock. I said today, receive the key of heaven to unlock. Can you say, I receive in the spirit. I receive in my heart. I receive in my mouth. Inside of my tongue. Whatever my mouth opens to proclaim. From the groanings of my heart. Shall change the destiny of the earth. Shall cause movement to take place. I receive this covenant into my life. And this vow with the Lord. In Jesus' name. Can you wave and say amen? Can you say you that you are an offense against me? Be rolled away and shut in. Let the rock push you out. In the name of Jesus. And you that is a messenger. To bring me help. I command your release. Let the stone release you now. In the name of Jesus. Into my dwelling. To bring me help. I receive the blessing. Of the keys of heaven. To bind and to lose. And to set free. And to set forth a new world order. This is my heritage in the Lord. And I receive it with thanksgiving. I activate it therefore. In the name of Jesus. Can you wave to the Lord and shout amen. That means. Everyone that is born of the spirit in this season. Will be able to move something. Or cast down something. It's a whole revolution taking place in the earth in this coming season. The church is not only getting back its power, it's getting back its divine ability to do and undo, to set up a new heavens, set up a new earth, and set up new patterns. I release the boldness of the lion of the tribe of Judah over your life, and I break away every chickenness in Jesus' name. Can you wave and shout, Amen? Let me quickly begin to conclude because I want us to get out. From the time I took over to the time I end, it should be nothing less than three hours. And this meeting is over. Sit down for a moment. Emphasis in 5784 is on the Lord's temple, which includes you. And that's why we've made all these proclamations. It's on the Lord's temple. I.e., what is the Lord saying from his temple? Psalms 11 verse 4. You want to see what he's saying? Put Psalms 11 verse 4 quickly. The Lord is in his holy temple. What is he saying? From the temple. Those are the questions you should be asking. Anytime you go out to do anything, ask what is the Lord saying in his temple. That is what you do there. How is God interpreting Nubu? That is how you relate with him. Not what you think. Not whether you lost or won election. How is God interpreting the now? from his temple if you ask i heard the lord say guidance will come if you don't ask and you send yourself he said you will meet the accident you were not expecting he said he won't protect us from that so we can learn to obey him 
So you have to wait on him and hear clearly. What is the Lord saying in the temple? And what is the second thing he's saying in the temple? Revelation 21, 22. Ah, please, this screen must work now. It's now that I need it. I, I didn't open it on my own. I beg. It's not the time to shut down. Those of you who are operating that screen. If those of you with the mic, somebody with the mic there, can you read that revelation quickly? Where the screen is not available, just read it. Revelation 21, 22. Give it to the person who has opened it. 21 verse 22. And I saw no temple therein, but the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. I cannot understand what you are saying. Can you repeat it? And I saw no temple therein. And I saw no temple therein. No temple. Yes. Oh, no temple, temple. not low. Yes. Uh -huh. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Now, listen. Listen. All these ornaments we have used to replace God have been wiped out. They are not going to be effective. God is taking his place. Did you hear what I said? He said he saw no temple. For God and his lamb, that means every salvation will be around the blood, the sacrifice, the meaning. You know, throughout Jesus' ministry on earth, he said he has come to introduce us to the Father and to do the will of the Father. Everything he came to do was the mission of the Father. Now, 5784 is unleashing the mission of the Father for the earth in this season. The Father. The Father. So, go and get your theology straight. It's not about man. It's not about those your prophetic actions. The faith of God does not rely on it. When you do it, it's to command nature and rule over it as its king and priest. Prince. Not to force and bribe God to act. These are two different things. You are the ruler of the earth. It's to exercise authority over what you have power over. Not what he has not given you power over. You are a king in the earth. So you pass your decree, the earth has to obey it. You rule by decrees. That is why you do your prophetic action. But don't mistake that to mean that is what is making God act. He's acting because you had from the temple. That was why you did what you did. So anything you do from outside the temple will not be fulfilled. It's a warning to the church. Enough of our own machinations. And I saw no temple therein. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the Lamb are the temple of me. What is the heaven saying? So try to find out what the, the temple is saying. Try to find out what the temple is saying. He is the temple. For the Lord will be the temple daring. The Lord and his lamb. And he said, let the earth keep silent. Because from now he's going to try the ways of the children of men. According to the other versions. God is going to try the heart of Tunubu and try the heart of Akpabio and try the heart of everyone that is in that government. Hey, who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? I say nobody. Listen, I'm not saying this to cause confusion or to own anything. I'm sorry, I'm not saying it out of vanity. But that is why I salute the courage of the chief of staff, the chief of defense staff. The first thing he does is to repair the temple. I was in America and I saw the temple being dedicated. Quietly. The Nigerian Army Temple or Chief of Defense Temple or whatever they call it is to repair the temple to speak for him. The symbol is very important. It's not lost on me as a prophet. Everywhere 
Abraham entered. He built God an altar first. That altar spoke for him. You, what is God telling you to do, to build? Hear from the temple. So, hear, hear, hear. Did I leave my phone somewhere here? No, it's up there, okay. Hear from the temple. Hear before you act. Whatever you do should be what the temple is saying. And the temple there is defined as the Lord and his lamb, not your sanctuary. Because there will be the temple in the earth. They will replace this, our physical temples. When you come here, it's to meet the Lord and his lamb. I said, Lord, what are you saying from your temple? Not what is the te temple in Kavanchan saying. What are you saying from your temple? Revelation 15 verse 5. What does that one in heaven? So that our voices can become unified as one voice. You know, there is no place for this disunity. God is not a God of confusion. He cannot say one thing and go and say another thing. Except if your stomach is what is leading you. Except if the Lord is causing mischief deliberately in order to change the law according to the Bible. He is a Lord that changes the law by mischief. He just causes confusion over everyone. He told his prophets, tell him, go, the Lord will go with you. Then he told, went and whispered to that one, tell him he will die when he goes. Yet it was, it was the Lord who spoke to all of them. He told one, put a line, he said, tell him, go, the Lord is with you. They went and whispered to the Lord, tell him he will die there. Instead of, if I were him, if I'm going to lock up anybody, I will lock up all of them. Plus the ones who told me what I wanted to hear. <laughs> and the ones who told me what I did not want to hear. And I'll tell the God who locked them up. If I die, let them all die. Kill all of them. He said, ah, but we told you. We told you. Ah, they start fighting themselves there. Right there, they would agree to ask God to find solution to your case quickly. Because whichever way you go, they are going to die. Except the Lord brings up a thunder that kills all the gods, so that they will kill you. Your sentence has been passed before the king left. The man foolishly allowed those other ones, the ones he did kalo kalo for, casted his vote for, happened to be the wrong, wrong ones. And locked up the innocent man. And the innocent man said, if you come back, then I am not the servant of the Lord. Chachambaiki, he didn't shut up. He still insisted on telling, if you come back, I'm not the servant of the Lord. Let me tell you, God is coming down from the temple to represent himself. He will talk for himself. So you better find out what he is saying. That is the most important key for this season. What is the Lord saying from his temple in every situation? You want to ask him, what are you saying from your temple about this job? You want business? Ask him, what are you saying about this business? You are in government. You are carrying an action. What are you saying about this action? You want to refine it? You want to add more things? What are you asking me to do? You must ask God from his temple. You must ask God. Can you go to verse 6 of that scripture? Put verse 6 on the screen. Gave what now? Gave unto the seven angels, full of the wrath of God, who lived forever and ever. Go ahead. To now, let me tell you, this was the exact vision I saw in the U.S. Just last week when I was writing, making these notes. When he was making me write, write, write. Listen to me. I saw him sending angels with command, with vows, specific commands that carried the rearrangement of the nations and of the individual champions. 
that will be key in the changes that are coming. And then I saw one carry the scroll of the church, giving each one in the church his assignment. You, you will do this. Like he did those days in the day of Jehoshaphat and Ahab. You will do that. You will do this. Everybody's assignment. You, must, within the vineyard where you are, carry it out. If it has not been provided for, go ask for permission. I, I seem to hear the Lord say, I should do this and this in this vineyard. Now, if it is something that can be matched to your duties, the wise men there will decide. If it cannot be matched to your duties and they decide to separate Silas and Paul or Paul and Silas for an assignment, they will repeat, separate you to go and do that assignment within the same vineyard. But this is a time when both leaders and followers must hear the temple, the voice. What is God saying from his temple? What does he want? Please, I have emphasized this point for so many minutes in order to underscore the importance Then number two, questions you will ask in this time. The first one is what the Lord's saying from his temple. Then the second question is, what is the temple saying to the world? That means what direction is the temple giving the world? You must preach contextually according to the direction of the temple. If the temple is emphasizing prosperity, speak prosperity. Prayer, speak prayer. Miracles, speak prayer. But what is it saying to the world? It's different from what general God is saying from his temple. What specifically is he saying to the world? That will give you your message that is meant for you, for the world. Stick to that message in this season. And you will prosper. And lastly, the last thing you must ask yourself is, what is coming out from the temple? You see, there are things God is doing without giving you an assignment from it. If you see, for example, God gathering angels with arms, and the clouds are gathered. It tells you God wants to go to war or is preparing for another season. Try to observe. You know, sometimes we even forget that Morocco is part of Africa. Except they tell you. They too don't relate with Africa like that. They relate with the Arab countries. And they relate with the Western world. But they don't feel... Yes... Tourism, that's okay, but that's where it stops. The rest of Africa is detachable. And just before that earthquake, I don't know what led us to discuss the Polisaro front. You see, me and my wife, we are a little bit political sometimes. Because it was in the news last week in the U.S., the Polisaro. The Polisaro are those fighting for independence from Morocco. And the Moroccans are not letting them go. And my wife raised that issue. So we were talking. And I said, look at these Moroccans. They don't relate fully well with the rest of Africa. And yet, they will still keep a group of people as slaves. Even when the world has recognized that they qualify for independence. The United Nations have recognized that police should be given their independence. Morocco will not allow them to go. So right now, United Nations is negotiating with Morocco. What are their terms? And that last week, the news was that Morocco was saying that it can only allow any kind of thing to happen to Polisario Front, as if it is God. On its own terms, 
That means they will be the God of Polisaro. So I got angry. I was listening to the news. And I said, look at these people. God will humble them. These days, anybody who talks loud like this eh, and plays God anyhow over people, God will show his face from heaven. And sincerely, it's not as if I saw anything. I just said. And the next day, there was the earthquake. From nowhere. It wasn't there that night. So the news changed the next day. The news that was discussing Polisaro and United Nations negotiating was no longer negotiation. The capital of Morocco was divided into half and crashed into rubbles. Earthquake opened and swallowed it up. Now, the king is not talking about Polisaro now. Eh? He's preoccupied with the dead and how to find the dead. And when they tell you more than 2,000 people have died, or about 3,000, then you know it's five to 10,000. And that they are still looking for the bodies and they are looking for loan, those who are looking for ah! Today, let there be an earthquake in that place. An earthquake that sets you free in Jesus' name. That became the new topic in my house. How to ask for, I said, can you see what this God is doing? This God is frightening me. I didn't mean it this way when I was talking yesterday. But I knew God would not allow this lie down. And you know, I was speaking from the revelation of this 50, 57, 84. That the sovereign God is bringing down his temple to represent himself in the temples of the earth. Including my own temple, my body. He is bringing down himself to represent Therefore, let the earth keep quiet. Ah! The Moroccan case frightened me. And I had the Lord say, what you see me do in Morocco, I will do in Nigeria, I will do in the other nations of the earth. The Amen. The day has come. Over the nations, my day, it is my day. They have had their time. It's my time. I'm holding this mic. He's still recording all the things that you are not hearing. Not hearing is the vital ingredient of the message, which I cannot repeat. It's very important that we allow the Lord to take back his place of authority in our lives. And his voice become our voice. And shut up our own voices. So that Christ can reign indeed. In the earth. It's not about my advantage or disadvantage. In the earth. It's not about my advantage or disadvantage. It's about God's will. Being done on earth. As it is in heaven. Now, listen. The angels that spoke from heaven brought their vials. They were given vials. Listen. The kind of sacrifice you make in this season will decide your destiny. Sacrifice. The kind of sacrifice you make. The vial had sacrifices in it. When they poured, spirits of particular characters manifested. The kind of sacrifice you make will decide the kind of spirits that will manifest for you. So, it's going to be a season of sacrifices. As the Lord opens the heavens and begins to locate you in your own place, what you make your location speak will represent how God goes forward with you after. What God does with you after. So those of you who forget God after you get located, you know that an emptiness is going to take after, over.
by the temple things will be unlocked the secrets of God will speak number four will unlock number eight which will release the sound of number seven revealing the fullness of number five number five is grace revealing the fullness of grace I want to repeat that all these were the things he was telling me in the night I will stand up leave my wife on the bed and continue my writing number four will unlock number eight which is the double form that I explained earlier in this 57 50 I mean 84 the numbers will unlock themselves number four will unlock number eight which will release the sound of number seven the sovereign God revealing the fullness of number five grace in the earth the secrets of the millennium will start unfolding in its fullness from 2024 or 57 84 into 2025 and 57 85 in fact what i wrote here that those two years will speak a lot about the heart of god and the will of god for the earth i wrote it like that here those two years will speak a lot about the heart of god and the will of god so the direction you see him take the nations that's the new world order is forming for the earth thank you father and then i wrote about netanyahu i won't bother you about that that those are his personal prophecies and i wrote about putin and i wrote about other presidents of the earth i won't bother you about them when the time comes maybe i will talk about them those were all revelations given me last week while i was in the u.s uh, by the lord but I heard the Lord say, because he has become the temple, you know, we used to say this in Israel, when we go to Israel, we will ask God to sukkah us, tabernacle us. Now, because God now is a temple, it means only those he swallows up inside his temple will find manifestation. Only those he tabernacles In Hebrews, I think it's chapter 8, verse 2. The Bible says, Christ is the minister. In his what? In his tabernacle in this season. The direction must come from heaven. I want us to stand up on our feet. I want to close tonight. At least... And because everything about this year has to do with door, it means gateways are opening, going to open. They release, door and release, the doors releasing, opening. Gateways are going to be opening and some gates, eternal gates are going to be shut. When I was talking about Morocco, I wasn't just trying to talk about its feelings. Again, if you follow the news closely, up to the day before yesterday, and I think yesterday too, I think it was yesterday I saw it on television. Listen. Recently, America opened a department for UFO, unidentified flying objects. Things, they believe that some other people from out of space, out of this world, are visiting the Earth. Either from other planets or from God. They've not said it's from God, though. They just said there are visitors. Things that now for those of you who don't know, the day before that earthquake, actually two days that week before the earthquake, something strange happened in Morocco. A very huge ball of lightning, ball. It was like a globe, that shining globe shining at my eyes. Yeah. It just lit up the sky like a cycle. For days it was coming. The Moroccans couldn't explain it. They were busy arguing about that when the earthquake took place. Was God giving them a warning? Where are their astrologers? Like they had at the birth of Jesus. 
who were not born again, but they could see when God was talking and interpret it to the earth. Does Morocco not have an astrologer that can interpret the science to try to interpret God? It means you will have to find your way of interpreting God. Otherwise, you will miss the mark in this season. There are some things that only you can see and interpret for yourself. Your wife won't believe you, so shut up. Don't try to make a disciple out of somebody who will not understand. You will just discourage yourself for nothing. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Eh? Set your heart to obey. All of you will enjoy it after the thing. Don't finish. But obey. Somebody from the field asked me a question. God is asking him to do this extra. So should I do it or should I not do it? Because there are people who are offended. It's stupid to ask. It's stupid to ask me that question. Of course, many of you know I can say you are very stupid. I said you are very stupid to ask me that question. God has given you the next dimension. If you have researched it and found it was scriptural, it was God's perfect will. Do you need my permission? Are you breaking the laws of heaven? Are you breaking the laws of throne room? He said no. Are you going outside the vision? He said no. It's a dimension of the vision. I said, only you has the gift of that dimension. I cannot take your gift. My friend, step into it before you waste our time and we miss God's chance. Remember, eh? He didn't know with a zeal I would command him to. I said, do. We are in the days. Listen, there are signs God is showing you. Are you interpreting them correctly? Signs. Or are you misinterpreting them? And just, and just... It's all about you, 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 you. Self. Me, 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 me. Not the kingdom, not the people. That's why I say you have to ask yourself many questions during this time. Morocco saw its sign, but could not interpret it. On the day of that earthquake, that thing came for the last time and supervised the earthquake. Once the earthquake was over, it withdrew itself. So they are now trying to mystify it and say some uh, demons or astral forces attacked Morocco. That is not what they should be asking. What have we not done right to prevent this thing? Why have we not sought for seers to understand what these signs are so that we can do the right thing? Even now, what are they doing to correct it? it comes of you. You must prepare your vial for the Lord that you are going to pour. The sacrifice you pour will decide a lot of things. But it must come from its place, its rightful interpretation from the throne in heaven. I am serving a living God. His name is Jesus Christ. He died. The cities of Israel will prosper. I saw God send an angel with a measuring line and was measuring Israel. And in the midst of all the contra time, Israel is contradicted. It's now. The enemies are attacking everywhere, both within and outside. Even Jews within are rebelling against the government. If there is any time Israel is in a crisis, it's now. The government that was imposed by God, not the word imposed, it wasn't the choice of the people. Go and read the story of Netanyahu's second coming now. You will know God just bamboozled him and put them on top. He just blinded them and forced him on top. And the guy who was not, forgive me, chosen necessarily by popular vote, 
He's forcefully changing the seasons of the time because that is his ordination. Unto that he was called. He wasn't called to practice democracy. He was called to reset Israel for what is to happen. Now, for those of you who don't know, some of the biggest arms that have not been seen for the time to come have been built under him now secretly to protect Israel for the future. If that is the reason why he's sitting there, hey, I, otherwise they'll be playing politics and their souls will be lost. Oh, the scientific thing. They have already made medicine for Russia, made medicine for Iran. They are not afraid of anybody. And yet that is secret to even America with its spy power is not able to dictate some of the things Israel is doing now. Under Netanyahu. He is the most secretive president they've ever had. You, you never know what Bibi is thinking in his heart. That's his guy named Bibi. Netanyahu. You never know what he's thinking. Yet he's trying to secure the future that is fighting him. His season is a short one. But he will do what no man can do. They will thank him later. That is why the chief of defense staff has stopped criticizing him. Before, the signal of the chief of defense staff about this judiciary thing was like to fight him. Then suddenly he shut up. It's like he, he tumbled into something he never knew was part of the thing on the ground. He may disagree with the tactics. But the future must be secured. What am I trying to say? Today, I provoke the secret things concerning you to sit in judgment. I repeat, to sit over you in judgment over the things that will not allow your future to take place. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can you wave and shout Amen? So this season, the deep concerning us is releasing the ordinances of our future so that we can survive. <laughs> so the angel that communed with me said in Nigeria, grace, Hallelujah.
Dancing in those of them who could not go to the wailing wall are dancing around central places they have gathered in their communities in very strategic synagogues throughout the night. If you were in the Middle East or you had you have access to Israel 24 news, all you'll be watching is dancing and singing and blowing of shofars. And Every rabbi that has spoken this time seems to connect this season to the Messiah. It's a mystery. All of them are in agreement on that the Messiah is gathering his sons to do a thing they cannot understand. This is the first time all the extremists in Israel have agreed to vote in one place. During this, that was what brought Netanyahu. Now they are threatening to withdraw and leave him alone. That's why I said he's going through battles everywhere. Last week, some of them gave him notices. They are going to leave him alone. If they leave him alone, it means the government will collapse. But as they are doing that, other new ones are coming in. It's a mystery how God keeps a man in his season. Listen to me. A lot of changes are going to take place in your life. Amen. But we must establish and renew our covenant tonight to go through the door, not through the back door. Let God not manage you. I don't want God to manage me. I must go through the door. I must be deserving of the blessing. Not just leaning on grace, 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 grace. I want to be deserving of the blessing. Because I do the things that please him. And when I offend him, I don't do it deliberately. I don't even know that I offended him. I thought I was still doing the right thing. Listen. John 10 talks about the door. If you know tonight you want to go through the door properly, you want to say, God, I'm sorry for all the windows I've had to go through, all the compromises, small cutting of corners that I know displease you. Today I want to be completely redressed. Let nothing condemn me in my life. Can you open the door for me to come in? Just like you came in through a door, and I said, those palm fronts you saw first, and you went through. You were going through the spiritual before the physical. Before you have always used the physical before the spiritual. Now we have reversed it. And today you want to just make peace and rest inside. Not remain partially outside. You want to say, God, I want you to rebuild my house with me. I want you to take over everything. Open a new door. I want to operate with you from inside, not outside. You want to repair your broken walls. I want you to leave that seat and come forward. And when you are coming, please come with your 
with those instruments, three instruments of covenant you were given. It's in your cup. The pomegranate today, all Israel are renewing covenant by those holy fruits that they were given to renew covenants. The honey, pomegranate, and the apple. And today we are doing the same here. All of Israel, all Israel, all over the world, whether they and saying that the Bible seems to describe it better. So he was quoting the Bible to describe a Jewish Orthodox experience, which is rare. It's an abomination. But he was copying from it. Please, if today you want to repair your door, you want to come in through the door, you will hold that and please step forward. I'm not emphasizing it because it is something you must be willing to do. You want to align or repair your life properly. And say, God, I want to speak with you from within. Even if you have been a Christian, but recently you've had to be cutting corners until you don't know now whether God can still accept you or not. Let's wash our garments today. When Israel crossed Jordan, they had to wash their garments before God could divide inheritance to them. Wash their garments, got circumcised and cleaned up. These are people that God had led under the cloud and the glory and the fire. Ooh. They ate manna in the wilderness. But here were they washing their garments afresh in order to get an inheritance. Is God telling you to wash your garment afresh? Please join them also. Dukanku ku masuna wikaya ni magimbaku And then if you brought any special sacrifice for the Lord, like some people have dropped some here, you can come and drop your sacrifice. A seed for the new year. And if you didn't prepare one, go home and prepare one and send it here. Anoint it and send that seed for the new year. Nima imbaku utawa injisima so ina. Whether it is right or wrong. And I sent him the video evidence. And he was very disappointed. I said, look, God is saying, if you like, overwhelm us with all the armies of the earth. In one day, God will change the story. And that day, shame will come. Unto those who have used their powers to attempt to destroy the righteousness of God. And the man wrote, I agree with you, sir. I will eat. I said, you better do. Because we're in the seasons of God when God's wrath. If you see people dying anyhow, you know God is doing something. He said, it's okay. I am the door. You must come through the door. No more window talk. No more window talk. You don't go through. It's thieves that go through the window. He said, I am the door. You want to tell God, I want to come straight with you. And I want you to straighten my life for me. I don't want to stay outside the door. I want to be inside. One last time, step forward. That's why I said you need to check yourself during this season. Could the problem be you? And not Satan. Could the problem be your company? Go and change that company. Definitely it is not God. Shall we bow our heads in prayer?
Can you tell the Lord to tear down the veil in your life and open the door for you? To transfer yourself into his kingdom through his Holy Spirit. Tell him today, in the year of the door, you want him to open the door and let you inside. Dalet is the year of the door. And in that John chapter 10 verse 9, Jesus talks about himself being the door. Before you go to the verse 10 that says, The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill. But verse 9 says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. And shall go in and out and find pasture. Find rest, find pasture by me can you ask him father this sanctuary is my witness and the holy spirit i ask that you open the door for me i don't know the way but show me the way inside and please forgive me my sins forgive me whatever things i have added to change the course of my life today wash me clean wash my heart and wash my feet so that by my feet you can guide I can have understanding of my direction but wash me clean make me a new creature have mercy on me reorder my house reorder my life reorder everything around me I am tired of being scorched. I'm tired of being taken advantage of. Have mercy on me, my own sins. And carry me through the door today. Can you invite him to wash your garment clean? Let him wash you clean. Change your clothes for you. Give you a new spirit. Give you a new body with a new character. Give you the power to live in obedience and not outside his will. Ask him to teach you his ways and choose your inheritance for you. Lord, I hand over everything. Take over from me. And from within your gate, manifest me. And show me the sure mercies of the house of David. Let me enjoy the goodness of the garden. And the glory of the Lord. Draw your lines around me now. To protect my life. As a special favor as first sons let me be grafted also let mine be a double grafting one in Christ Jesus and the other by Abraham and by these two immutable things my life cannot fail my life cannot be taken for granted let me be planted in the earth as a living tree that bears its seed and its fruit in season and out of season. According to Hosea chapter 2 verses 21 to 23 let the heavens hear my oil and hear the oil in my life. Let the earth hearken and do according to it. Let me be planted as a fruitful tree unto God Almighty according to verse 23. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Name of Jesus Christ. You said you will sow me unto you in the earth. 
and I will and you will have mercy upon me that did not know mercy before and you will say unto me which was not known amongst your people thou art my people and I will say unto you my God you are my God I receive the separation of spirits by this holy sacrament that I hold wherever you have grafted Israel as first sons graft me also wherever you have grafted the church as first sons even in Christ Jesus graft me also that through Jesus the blessing of Abraham will also come to me in Jesus name somebody say amen. amen now open your eyes and look at me I know we've been taught all kinds of theology but the truth is this there are two graftings Israel enjoys the first one because they don't know the Messiah like we know him that's why God still hearkens to them then there is the one we are enjoying that they are not enjoying Christ Jesus by which we see them as brethren by which we rise to protect them and embrace them even though they reject us sometimes but then Galatians 3 is the breaker it allows us to enjoy the two worlds and in this year of double may the two covenants match together to fulfill your destiny in the name of Jesus I repeat oh my father may the two covenants match today to make me a complete man interestingly today also is believing the Tanakh in the traditions of Israel that God created the earth and created Adam and Eve today today is their sixth day in creation when God created Adam and Eve and handed over the garden and crowned them with the in fact the Tanakh puts it that he crowned them with the glory of the God of God not as an ordinary man as a spirit being as I hold these sacraments ordinary man as a spirit let me stand before you redeemed by grace and grafted into the covenant of Abraham through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ that every vow every blessing that was given Abraham becomes mine and every inheritance through Christ Jesus be manifested to me I receive the gift of eternal life and the blessings that come with it while I am still alive therefore I hallow these elements and I invite the Holy Spirit to unlock the hidden riches of Abraham unto me and make me walk his sacred paths where every blessing follows me Jesus my life shall be filled, filled with sweetness as represented by the honey my life shall be filled with healing because of the healing ingredient in the honey in the name of Jesus my life shall become a river of life my feet shall bring me to the river where gold is found by the covenant of the thousands a hundred and restore the garments that are due to me restore back the fullness of my glory let every hindrance be cut off That means you can bite it, you can chew it, and it will pieces. It doesn't hurt you. They are covenants. All of Israel are doing what I'm doing now, including the little children, including those who are sick, even on their deathbed. They are taking this. It's a covenant of life. In fact, there are those who feel 
They are blessed if they die today for those who are sick. Because today is like paradise for them. They are already in it. So if they go today, it's the blessed day. Can you say today, my father, as I eat of the life of this covenant, let everything that should be uprooted be uprooted. Everything that is given be given to me. I receive now of the wisdoms of the Lord, the eternal blessing of the God of heaven, the security of my life, the securing of my covenant, as I renew the blessing of life for me and my generation, now and forevermore. I receive these ornaments that I might receive the gift of life. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Can somebody say amen? amen. Can you put those... If you bite, you will discover that the seed breaks immediately. Chew it and swallow it. Can you take a, a second one? We'll do that three times with nothing less than two or three seeds with just a little honey. This honey is not too sweet. Can you take it again? There will be three that bear witness in heaven and on earth. And number three, mark the dead and the resurrection of Jesus. He said after three days, he will rebuild his temple. Can you tell the Lord as I take this third one, rebuild my temple. And restore all the covenants that are hidden inside the temple. By these holy sacraments. By which you renew Israel. Let my altar be restored. In Jesus name. Amen. You may take the third one now. My chetuna. My Bring out the fattest one now. My chetuna. Yes, yes, dip it in the honey. Ah, chicken, son, my chicken, my chicken, my chicken, my chicken, can you tell the Lord, as I eat this, let me eat the flesh of Jesus and drink of his blood. In the name of Jesus, and as Israel eats this today, let the revelation of Jesus come upon them. That he that eateth of the flesh of the Lord, even he has life in himself. And I shall give him eternal life, saith the Messiah. So as they eat of this, let the revelation of the Messiah come. I pray for the salvation of Israel as I eat of my own salvation and of the covenant of the God of Israel into my bones to give me life, eternal life, eternal covenants, to heal me from all diseases and to establish it in the divine covenant of long life in the name of god the father god the son and god the holy spirit i eat of the life of the flesh of jesus and the sacred ornaments that was given abraham and the sons of abraham in jesus name Amen. Can you bite now? You don't need to chew all. You can take them at your own pace. I 
As you eat, can you tell the Lord, can I become that tree of life in the book of Revelation? And the book of Psalms chapter 1, that bears his fruit from now henceforth, in season and out of season. I receive the blessings of the Lord to grow physically in my flesh and to grow unto all my generations my branches my branches and the works of my hands I receive healing from poverty and deliverance from all my enemies as I renew the covenant of victory as a victor I arise now to oversee my gardens I receive the gift of gardens estates houses houses world even by this covenant today let my life become rich I receive the riches of the Lord that make it one glad and added no sorrow everything that is owed me they are returned to me now thank you holy father in jesus name can you dip it a second time into that oil or just turn it and let the oil come to you and buy it again a second time Why it is yet in your mouth begin to ask god for anything you want to ask him it's your moment with god now as you are chewing be asking and if you want to chew your enemy tell god i am chewing my enemies let them be chewed because some of you if you don't cost somebody today this prayer no complete you have to bite somebody this night to make your prayer feel complete Tell God, let the dispensation be over. Let the new dispensation open as you eat physically. The angels with the lines, the messengers, let them finish their work in my life tonight. Let me walk into a program that has already been decided. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Can you dip it a third time? Three times, just like you did the first one. My father told me that before my candle is out, we must finish this program. So I'm watching my candle. It's according to the laws of the candles. Our light will never cease to burn. For all of our generations. Amen. Now those of you who want to finish the rest, you can finish, you want to hand over to somebody to help you. at me Amen. so that you know there is nothing in my cup Amen. Amen. now today all of israel old and young are doing exactly what we are doing in the temple it's like eating angels food covenant food in the temple Why? this is one of the few times they allowed to eat in the temple. Amen. Can you begin to thank him for the gift of life? Amen. Just bless him for the healings, the restoration of your garden. Hallelujah. 
hope the children were giving their share of this. Uh -huh. You didn't just give it to adults. Amen. Amen. It means your children are grafted along with you. Hallelujah. The laws of this seed and honey will follow them. Amen. None of your seeds will fail. Amen. Today, this fruitfulness is attached directly to the house of David. The blessing of the house of David will follow you all the days of your life. The blessing of Psalm 27 will come upon you also. Because those are all the blessings they read during this season. May that blessing establish your house. Every vow of the Lord will not fail you anymore. Can you say, I have the keys of life. I go to unlock the doors. I thank you for the blessing. I thank you for the privilege. In the name of Jesus. Now, can you get this oil? Those of you who didn't anoint yourselves, if you want to, you will just touch, anoint your head, and just go on your knees and give thanks. And tell the Lord, where be the Holy Spirit? Let him take me out into my gardens. And that's the end of the program tonight. You will call the Holy Spirit to do what? Lead you into your gardens. And then God will now start showing you all the things he has marked out for you and telling you and giving you the equipment to take over. But you will anoint your head and give thanks. Now those holding the oil are not going to anoint you. Please, can you take the oils and enter the congregation? Those who want to pour some more of that oil out here. And just thank God for tonight. Now, listen. I want to thank God for your response towards this Rosh Hashanah. The hall is filled up here. But please, the greater one is coming. Our conference. That conference will hold it mainly outside with the cross, open heavens, the glory in Zion, because this time the harvest of the earth is our duty. So we're not going to stay indoors. Most of the times we'll be outside. In the morning hours, we'll be outside. We're still discussing how that will work, but we're going to be outside most of the time, and some of the times at the top of the tower, then a few other times inside the temple, the sanctuary. The new sanctuary is taking a new shape. If you go there, you will find out that the new, things, new things are coming up. From the first day to the last day, don't bring anything less than seven people. Number seven is the sovereign of this season. Invite 20, but make sure seven come with you. And feel free to come with your families. And let's enjoy the presence of the Lord. These days, people leave children at home, bring them for this kind of occasions. So that when they grow up, they will remember the... Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Hallelujah, thy the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, Lord, we bless you. We bless you. Glory, Hallelujah, Amen, Hallelujah, Thy the glory. We bless You, O Lord. Before the
take us into worship for another five minutes or praise or whatever they are led to do for another five minutes. We just bless the Lord together. It's a new year and you will take your palm fronts. We will dance for a few minutes and we can step out dancing and you will dance all through the year. I want you to listen. Three important things. I want you to know the first number one is that whether the earth likes it or not, there will be change in this season. And that God has vowed today, he has taken you out to bring about that change. I repeat, I had the Lord called you my begotten. The begotten of the Lord. I have found my begotten. God is going to treat you as a begotten. God is taking you out into his harvest. Number two, God is ordaining rulers over the next dispensation. Rulers who will open doors for other people and they too will be blessed. Rulers who will build canopies for those who are weak. Today, can you raise that right hand? Let the power of this ordinance rest upon you as you go out. Amen. Can you wave to the Lord and say, Amen. Amen. Number three. Hmm. I heard the Lord say, he has opened a book to take stock of each one of your progress. That means he's going to start recording the blessings that you go through. They are trying to set up the door, the, the Hebrew letter for this new year, Dalet. That is what they are setting up there. And as is our tradition, starting from those in front, once we start taking those songs, those final songs, you will dance through it and dance the year through. Now, listen, a book is being opened, not like before. Anybody who offends you unlawfully, the book shall record that one for judgment. And then everybody who blesses you, the book shall also record that one for visitation. We are entering into a year of judgments. God used the word S. Judgments. He will bring everything to judgment. Both the righteous and the unrighteous. Your righteousness will be judged. Your righteousness will be used to follow you. Your unrighteousness will be judged. I wanted to finish with those three. So you know there are markers that have been sent to mark you. Markers that have been sent to mark you. Markers. Where is the one line that is drawn across there? Do they have one set up there? Let them put one there. This is all. Well, we'll take that by faith. There is a little marker. Dalet is like that with a little small marker there. Eh? Eh, I know there is one on top, but there is a one down too. But this is the key letter. We're going to go by it. You know, this will follow too much internet. Sometimes the internet does not get the very, very specific correct thing because there are all kinds of arguments in the internet about everything. Somebody will leave it like this to raise a meaning. 
that he wants given to it. Because everything here has a meaning. Then somebody will add the little bent tilt here. And then you go through the door. The little tilt has its own Hebrew dimension. I don't see that here. I will have preferred that here a little bit. Listen, because this is very important. As you walk through this door, anything that will not allow you to prosper will not enter that door with you. Like I said, a book is being opened for both the righteous and the unrighteous. And judgments are being meted out. It's not like before when, I'm sorry, there is a law of forgiveness. He will forgive when they repent. But there is a law of remembrance. Like God remembered what Sambalat and the other man had done against Nehemiah. There is a law of remembrance. God remembered Haman. God remembered Noah. Even for his righteousness, God remembers. You are entering into that door. As you go through that door, your life is activated to remembrance. And God will visit you to fulfill your destiny. Let me have that anointing oil. The one in the bottle. I don't want to touch any oil. Father, not by power nor by might, but by your spirit, I activate this gate. And I say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, let the three laws you have just given us, the three words you spoke will take place in our lives. Let them come alive now. None of us shall fail. Our lives will not fail us. Our testimonies will not fail. The angels will not fail. Your word will not fail. We receive all of this with thanksgiving. Lord, we activate it in each life as they pass through. And we give you glory. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And somebody say, Amen. And somebody say, Amen. Therefore, Lord, we step into your grace tonight and come under your cover and covering that by you we might have abundance and fullness of life. We enter through the gates into our already and we will just dance unto the Lord and pass through it. And I want to welcome all our guests who have come. I can see Father Chris Delvan. Uh -huh. They are opening the gates for us. Come on, let's take a song and just bless the Lord. Mm. Now, those of you with the shoppers, I want seven on this side, seven on the other side. After you have passed through, come and line up and blow the shopper.
celebrate, 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 celebrate. One, two, three, go! I want those of you, those of you with the chauffeurs. I want five here, five there, one, five stand here and face the congregation, and you will just keep on blowing. At a point, I will stop. And we'll just give thanks and we'll continue. And those of you who want to leave can leave. Let's go ahead. Come on. Come on. Set. We want to run away. 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 We want to run away.
with it. Just to roll with it. Come on, let just to roll with it. Say, I said, you hold on, you hold on, you hold on, you hold on, you hold on. Hey, when the Lord turned around the captivity of Zion, they were like dust and tree tree. Everybody, I want you to dance. Are you ready? Dance, 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 dance. Somebody shout, yeah! Yeah! Hey, I say, dance, dance, dance. Say, I go, they follow you, they go. Follow you, they go. Somebody scream, yeah! I go, they follow you, they go. Somebody say, Shanato Ba! I want you to look at your neighbor and say, Shall not so far. Hey, hey, come. Yeah. Before the shoppers take over, Aki, you will lead your team eh? along with the music ministers. We are going to give God a special dance. Now, listen. This celebration continues tomorrow and next tomorrow. With Pastor Chris Delvan. Did you hear what I just said? Am I right or wrong? Is it not tomorrow? Monday. Sunday. What time? I thought it was tomorrow. Sunday is too far away. Eh? You say what time? 4 p.m. We are continuing this celebration. So gather everybody. You can come from Joss. You can come from all over Southern Kaduna. And then listen. I got a message from Silas Yaku that for those of you who couldn't go for pilgrimage with us, he is specially leading the Equa pilgrimage this year. And it's going to be full of Bible study like we do in our own. It's prophetic action. If you know Silas very well, music and the other actions cannot be counted out. So if you couldn't make it for our own, this one is cheaper. It's not as expensive as our own. So it means that you can buy the ticket at your level. Please plan let's join them 
November. I have the date somewhere. It's not here. I will have announced it, but we will put it on our throne room page. It's either November or December, the Equa pilgrimage. It's going to be led by Salah Siako, and it's going to be full of music, Bible exposition, like we do in our own case. Maybe even a little fast and retreat. So feel free to join them. But on Sunday here, we have an appointment with the Lord Jesus Christ at four. Let's come and open up the gates of the new year. As we prophesy to the next. And you know, with Prophet Chris Delvan, anything can happen. <laughs> eh? That one is free for all. Holy Ghost is free for all. The Holy Ghost does what he wants without apology. So gather everybody. If you have to go to Joss and come back on Sunday and book yourself an accommodation or sleep in your car, come back. And then Wahibne for all of you in Southern Kaduna. Let's come enjoy an evening with the Lord. And I saw the PFN chairman, the former PFN chairman, and all the rest of them, can leaders, a few of them were here tonight. Please pass the word to your churches. Let's come enjoy Jesus on Sunday. I'm sure some vehicles will go around the town tomorrow making very serious announcements to that effect. We want to come and exalt Jesus here in this place. I can feel this now. Just a minute. They are 10 here. They are going to sound the shofars. 10 times 10. Okay, people will sound a hundred times. How they get the energy for that, I don't know. But we live by grace. Eh? That is why we can enjoy the two worlds. Can you raise your right hand or that and this thing to the Lord as these shofars go out 10 times? And as they go out, just bless the Lord as the Lord sets his last. With a heart of gratitude, I am going to give you praise. Hey, hey, hey. Everybody did say, hey, Obi Gade, 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 Siva, 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 somebody jump, come on, what we got there, 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 Somebody wave your powerful. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah, lift him up. Say higher, 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 higher. Say higher, higher, higher. Say higher, higher, higher. Say higher. I will lift up his name. Oh yeah. Get, get, get. Praise you are the most high. You 
shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say Shana to Somebody shout Shana to For those of you who don't know the meaning of Shana Tova, it means even if there was no blessing left, God will create blessings for the new year for you. It does not only mean Happy New Year, but the meaning is that may God temper with the new year to bring good to you. That is a deep meaning, the Hebrew meaning of Shana Toba. He's asking God to temper, intervene, touch something, manufacture something to make it a happy new year. So when they use the word Shana Toba, it is to celebrate life and celebrate life in each other. And they do that after breaking of bread, the one we did this night. Now, listen, tomorrow morning, I may make time for a few people. Those I will make time for will be told. And I will spend time to pray for you in the chapel. I'm led to just do that in the chapel. In the morning. Uh, in spite of my travels, I've not been able to sleep very well for a few days. I've been in the air for two days, non-stop. From the day before yesterday into yet to today, throughout today I was on the road. I came in here, took my bath, got dressed and came up here. So normally I should relax in the morning, but I feel very strong. It's especially just like we hold. Now, there is an army of angels, workers waiting for you outside. To ensure that your inheritance is fulfilled. You will go out. And the clouds you saw before shall become rain of blessings. Amen. I didn't hear somebody say amen. amen. How many of us are ready for great things? Wonderful things beyond our imagination. Now let the heavens unlock all of that and more. Amen. That as you step out, every step you take, a page will be opened. And the glory will visit you. Amen. Within these three months, you will have tangible certificates to bring to the Lord. Amen. Receive the many great miracles God will do now. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is somebody here, I don't know what will happen, but it will make somebody so happy that he will create a special place for you. And by that which that person creates, a promotion will come for you. Receive your miracle in the name of Jesus. up for three weeks consecutively he said test the Lord and you must come back to share this meeting I mean this, this this particular testimony during our conference every one week will give you a major thing you didn't ask for that means there are three major packages that you should be expecting within three weeks back to back because every morning your name shall be mentioned there shall be a remembrance for good and not for evil the lord shall see it i mean to it i don't know how to put it the way i see it but this is the best that my humanity can allow me there will be talk of you. Yeah. But every week for three weeks, 
something that is an oil, major oil on your head will come to you. I hear the Lord say, for all of us this year will be for glory. And none of us shall regret seeing this season. Can you begin to bless the Lord for today? Let's give him glory. Let's bless him for the new year. Let's give him glory. Turn to your neighbor. Don't touch him. Don't shake hands. Mm -mm. Just look at him and say, Shana Tova. Left and right. Turn to your left. Turn to your right. Shana Tova to all of you. Huh? Shana Tova. Shana Tova. You. Shana Tova. Somebody shout hallelujah. Go and collect your miracles everywhere they are. Because you are released tonight. Can somebody shout hallelujah? The dance and the song will be the grace. So as we are singing, you can be going. And we gather here on Sunday 4 o'clock. And come. If you have a drum, bring your own drum too. It's a Holy Ghost freelance. Eh? You have your own kalangu. Carry it by the side. Because may kalangu neze imaganafa. The sounds of the spirit will come forth in such strange ways. That Sunday has to be by the Holy Ghost. So let's 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 just gather here. And let this place be full of praise. And let it be the release of these angels we are talking about. Somebody say amen to that. Are we ready to give God one big dance again? Eh? And this time, Kuma Kuseke. And listen, I was going to make a very important announcement. Our youths, I want to challenge you. Can you plan for the Lord? Because it's a year of the sovereignty of God and the Messiah, the Lamb. He will be the tabernacle here. Can you plan for the Lord a symphony of both poetry and a beautiful praise for the October conference? We will showcase you. Did you hear what I said? And we are not asking anybody to organize you. If you organize yourselves and you have one, report to us. Tell those with the giftings in Zonkwa of worship and poetry. <laughs> Get all your teams together. And let's do a symphony of praise and of worship. Let somebody craft something new from heaven. I told you, watch what the temple is doing. Let's do it on earth. Are we in agreement? Because God said there will be surprises during the conference. So, and the world will be gathering here that time. People will come from all over the world. So let's plan for the Lord a symphony of praise, bringing out the messages of the Messiah for this year. And if possible, prophesying to the crowd and speaking to the congregation in psalms and hymns. Let's bless the Lord. If we can make it for every day or every other day, we will make program for that. But this conference is not going to be the normal conference. And when I say normal, you will see it in the program. The program is different. Most of the morning will be spent outside, up to 9 or 10 o'clock, outside. And then you will see the rest of the program. Let me not let the cat out. Please gather everybody you can gather. October 23rd to 28th. And those of you coming from the nations and are listening to me, if you've not gotten your visa, it's a reminder. Apply for your visas for those of you who have to apply. And those of you who will get your visas on on arrival, make your arrangements with the office and be there on arrival. Most countries need a visa, so get your visa now. Get your visa now. Are we ready to lift up Jehovah and just bless him? Father, we thank you for those angels and every spirit that has been released to work for us. We step into their hands. Holy Ghost, we step into your hands now. Do with us as it is in heaven. Let a new praise 
from our dwellings fill the whole earth. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And as you dance, those of you who came for needing a healing grace, you'll find out that you can use that body and you can come back and give God his glory. The Lord bless you and shalom. Help. School of Princess. Two, two. Hallelujah. School of Princess and Princess is 10 o'clock tomorrow morning at the school. Pastor Akila, Reverend Akila is here. Uh, we have the School of Princes and Princesses taking place at 10 o'clock. Please be there if you are a youth that is in the house and registered. God bless you. Come on. We celebrate.